look at this. It's 250 laps, 500 miles, pit road speed. These guys, they didn't have to make a green flag stop at Daytona last week. 55 miles per hour. You heard Jeff Hammond talk about it. 45 to 50 laps in that fuel window. Pretty easy pit road to get on to. Nice big pit boxes. Shouldn't be any big problems there. But here's where your keys to the race are right here. How are you going to win this race? First thing you got to do, Larry, the driver's got to watch that tack. Take care of the engine. We're going to run 500 miles today. Absolutely. Take care of those RPM. Adapting the conditions. Being able to move that car around as the track changes throughout this race. Well, as we said, Larry, that feedback from the driver. My car's doing this. My car's doing that. Thinking ahead, planning ahead. And you heard Dick Berger talk about it in the Bush race yesterday. Maybe not pit strategy necessarily, but that final pit strategy. Matt Yoakum. And Larry Mack talked about pit strategy, but, but it's also the guys that go over the wall. Now here, Matt Clark in the 24 pit. Six of his seven over the wall guys this year are new in the current roles they are. Only Jeff Cook, the Jackman, was in that role last year. Their spring training was the duel in Daytona. They won the battle off pit road and they won their duel, but it could come down to how the driver enters his box. So many things can happen, but these guys are really pumped up about 2006. Steve? Well, Matt, Mark Martin has a win on this racetrack. Now, last September, he was in contention for the win. The caution flag came out late with less than 10 laps to go. Kyle Busch came to pit road and took two tires. Crew chief Pat Trison had Mark come to pit road and take four tires. Pat said, didn't work out too well for us. Kyle Busch won the race. Mark Martin finished 11th. He learned a lesson. Dick? Well, you know that Kurt Busch is in the car that formerly was driven by Rusty Wallace, but so many changes on this team. New crew chief, new car chief, new spotter, new engine tuner, new shock expert. This team is really all new. They did well at Daytona. Let's see how well they hang together today and if they can deliver a win for Kurt Busch. Mike? Ready to race in Fontana, California. The honorary starter is actress-singer Hilary Duff. Her sister Haley is an honorary race official. They and we and you are ready to get this show on the road. Well, DW, the fans been waiting, and I'll guarantee you I've been waiting for almost eight months to tell you reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. All right, Larry. All right. Coming to the green, coming to the green. It's out. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys. California style. Yeehaw. Take her on down in there. leads lap one with a lot of three wide middle and back of the pack and that's something kurt bush wanted to do he wanted to get those five points for leading that lap right there four wide there going down into turn one this little crowd right here but you can do that here this front straightaway is really really it sets you up for kind of being a loser getting down into turn one if you get in the wrong place dale jarrett Started back in the 19th position right now. Looking back at Jeff Green. Track conditions are going to be good today. It's a little overcast, not quite as hot as it was when these guys were qualifying and practicing. That's really going to help tighten the cars up, get them a lot of grip. See Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. Riding with him down the front stretch, looking out at Scott Riggs in the Valvoline 10 car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. started in the 18th position. That's about where he's running right now. Let's go to fourth place. Kyle Busch ahead of Denny Hamlin and Jeff Burton. And Kyle just passed Hamlin, the rookie in the 11, a lap ago. Look at this right here. Matt Kenseth, Jeremy Mayfield, the Robbie seven Gordon. Of, yep, seven is Gordon, 41, Reed Sorensen, 07, rookie Clint Boyer. And I would definitely keep an eye on that 17 car right there because he's been passing about four or five cars a lap. That's Matt Kenseth. Didn't get that good qualifying running on Friday. But watching him yesterday, he was one of the fastest cars, the most consistent cars in race practice. Ryan Newman on the march. Battling Joe Nemechek in the Army 01. 
10th place here. And Ryan Newman in the 12 car, they didn't have that good of a qualifying run, but Darrell, I just believe he and his crew chief, Matt Boyle, and they are focused on race setup this year. Yeah, the well, qualifying. they came with the Intrepid, which is different than the Charger. It's an older car, but they like the balance of the car. But I do think they may have to learn a little bit about it because this is a different aero package than they ran with the Intrepid two years ago. And still a lot of three wide racing. As drivers who maybe didn't qualify quite so well, jockey to move up and smoke from, was that Jeff Green in the 66? Little, must have been a little tire rub going into the corner there. Well, these cars are, you know, they'll bottom out a little bit, rub a tire up in the fender, particularly early when the air pressure is still coming up. Greg Biffle, you won't see Biffle very far off the lead much of today. He won yesterday's NASCAR Bush Series race here. Uh, Biffle has the potential to stink up the show. <laughs> and, and this was the type of racetrack. We talked about two-thirds of the schedule being like Fontana. This is a type of racetrack that he really adapted to a lot as he's up there battling for the lead here on lap five. And this is the same chassis that he won Homestead with, but it has that new Ford Fusion body that I think is actually a little better than the Ford Taurus body. Oh, by all means. And I think I think Kurt Busch in the two car, that's a Dodge, it's an Intrepid. See, I think they were looking, here he comes, here comes Biffle for the lead. You see he runs off the bottom here. They're gonna drag race down the front. Yeah, Kurt Busch, the two, lost so much momentum over in turn four, his car walked up the racetrack with him. But I think Kurt really is responsible for these guys going back to this older car because he knew what the Ford Taurus was like. He drove the Charger, he drove the Intrepid. He said, the Intrepid's more like my old Ford Taurus was. Working just outside the top 10 is Mark Martin carrying AAA colors this year on his Jack Roush Racing number six. He runs in 11th, just ahead of teammate Carl Edwards. Here's Steve. And Mike, he had some anxious moments early in this race before the pack sorted out a little bit. He said over his radio, get me a driver's side mirror out. I'll put it on on the first pit stop. It's a little mirror that the drivers use as a side view mirror. Well, you need that here because of all the side-by-side -side racing, as you saw early on. Now, what will happen, they'll all try to get single file pretty as soon as they can because all that is exciting to watch, that side-by-side -side stuff, but it's no fun for the driver, particularly the one on the outside. The driver on the outside right now is J.J. Yaley, the rookie in the Joe Gibbs number 18, the Interstate Batteries car, that ride vacated by Bobby Labonte. And Yaley right now is 10th. Tell you what, we were talking about Matt Kenseth a while ago in the 17 car right there. Started back in 31st position. He's been making a move, but that car up there on the outside, Jimmy McMurray in the 26, he's been making moves as well up there in the 21st position now. Well, that, Remember, this car right here is the car that Kurt Busch drove last year. It was the 97 car, but now Jamie McMurray in its same team, just a 26 number. Now that red car there on the inside uh, with a big old weight on the side of it, he's backing up. He doesn't seem to be real happy with his car right now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. started 18th, now running 19th, made a little bit of gain early. The car looked like it, just yeah, a it looked like it fell off. He took off, looked like he had a pretty good run, and all of a sudden it just started going backwards. And he was not very happy with his car in practice yesterday, but this was the type of racetrack that was the Achilles heel for this 18 last year, the high-speed, flatter racetracks. Let's ride along. Check with Matt. Call length back to the 10 car. You clear all around. That was, that was his spotter, Steve Meal, clearing him. Now, this team enters Fontana, a place where they've really struggled, Mike, like you've mentioned all weekend in the past, but they feel like they are slowly gaining on it, much like Jeff Gordon. They realize they're not going to hit that sweet spot in one weekend, but they're making gains on that mile-and-a-half, two-mile program. They're expecting a good top 10 run today, and that would almost be a victory for them. Well, they've got a lot of work to do. I just remember uh, talking to Tony Jr. And, you know, he worked with Michael last year quite a bit of the year. I, I just think that there's two different setups here for uh, Dale Jr. and Michael. They were they never liked the same thing. It's going to take them a race or two or three or four or five to get on the same page. Looking from Joe Nemechek in the 0-1 back at Jamie McMurray. And a big knot of cars behind McMurray. This is 14th place on back. 
And there Matt. goes Matt Kenseth again. I mean, he's getting one or two cars a lap, but again, based on watching his car in practice yesterday, he was on the mark. And this is a battle for third place with teammates, Kyle Busch in the five, and you're riding with the Daytona 500 winner, Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Well, Kyle Busch likes this racetrack. He got a win here last year. That car is really, really looking good right now. 11 laps complete. Greg Biffle out in front of pole sitter Kurt Busch in the Auto Club 500 presented by Q Motor Oil. That was a 41-40, same as leader on that lap. Still outside. behind you. Great service and great rates. You can get it all from State Farm. You got to be willing to fight for it. Craig Biffle trying to double up here in California. Yesterday, the Bush race winner, and today he is out front of pole sitter Kirk Bush by 1.9 seconds. Jeff Burton. In third, Jimmy Johnson fourth. There's a new fifth place car, and it's big orange. Tony Stewart, the defending Nextel Cup champion, drove around Kyle Busch to put himself in fifth. And I've been watching the scoring monitor. He started back in the 12th position, and he's been one of the cars that seems to be able to run laps about equal to Greg Biffle in the 16, our leader, and he's been mowing him down as he's up there now battling Jimmy Johnson for fourth in the 48. Leader just went by the line. And here comes Tony. He's uh, leaders down in the middle of one and two, and here comes these guys. So they, they've the 16 cars definitely got the uh, got everybody's number. For more on Stewart, Dick Bertrand. Michael Stewart's crew chief, Greg Cipinelli, this morning, Mike, and he said that so far this has been a fun, trouble-filled weekend. They unloaded that number 20 car, a brand new car, and it was fast right off the truck. Stewart.
Stewart, for his part, has simply refused to talk about what has gone on last weekend at Daytona. He said to the reporters, if you want to ask me about this week, we'll talk all you want. You want to talk about Daytona? Go talk to somebody else. And Stewart said he's in such a good mood that the reporters can't tick him off here at California. You're right, Dick. He, he went on to say, the only thing I know about history is that in all of history, nobody's been able to change it. And the other thing well, is, let's move on. you don't learn from history. That's the other thing history teaches us. You can see the different lines you can run on this racetrack. We talked about that earlier in the show. If your car is a little bit tight, you know, you can move it around. You can move it up to the middle of the racetrack. You can run the top or the middle at one end of the racetrack. You can run around the bottom at the other. Yeah, and I just noticed the sun's peeking through pretty good. That changes things dramatically here. Uh, clouds, overcast, tracks one way. That's why these drivers have got to continually be talking to the crew, tell them what's going on out on the racetrack guy that just lost a couple of positions there in that black car Jeff Gordon in the 24 car he started ninth. he had kind of maintained Matt but he just lost two positions Larry Mack right now he's just trying to hang on he's got a balance issue he says the loose end is just really killing him the car just has an uneasy feeling but he can't the biggest issue he just cannot get back in the gas the car is way too tight on exit he has to wait for the car before he can get back in the gas right now he's just figuring out the game plan for their first stop of how to fix it mike what about that paint job <laughs> dupont is uh, gordon's sponsor dupont automotive finishes hot hues is their custom color line that's a chip foos design street riders are familiar with with chips great designs and his work it takes a long time to paint those flames. California kid right there. Yeah. But one thing I noticed, Larry, as that car comes off the corner of the 24, the nose is really high up in the air, like it's packing the nose. That's going to make it really, really tight off. And of course, tight off means as he goes through the middle of the corner to the exit of the corner, he's turning the steering wheel, but the car's not turning. It's just sliding the front tires. Nothing's happening. You got a lot of wheel and no response. Kevin Harvick up the racetrack just a little bit, and the icebreakers could wrench. Chevy Dale Jr. trying to move past on the inside and Harvick waves him by. Steve. Well Mike there's a good reason for that. Kevin Harvick started 15th moved up to 10th but he's dropped to 12th because his car has gotten very loose in and on the throttle. It's also running hot now down here in the pit box. They have a picture tape that shows the tape configuration. They're talking about pulling some tape off that grill. You can see they're also numbered one, two, and three. Todd Barrier, the crew chief, will tell one of the mechanics which part of the tape to remove, but as Larry Mack says, no free lunch in Arrow. But Darrell, I'm gonna tell you what, that is not very much opening on that race car right there. I, I kind of find it hard to believe that, that they started the race with that much of that nose taped up. Well, remember Larry, uh, the, the Fusion and the Monte Carlo both have new noses. Uh, they went through Daytona without a whole lot of problem, but it was cool in Daytona. Today it's a little warmer, and uh, they're going to have to play with that tape a little bit. But that is, you're right, that's not near enough opening for a racetrack like this. And the reason they put that tape on the nose is because it really helps the aero part of the car. It nails the, the front end down, plus it helps the straightaway speed. So you try to run as much as you can, but you've got to have enough open to cool the water in the radiator. And that's an easy adjustment. Tape on, tape off. Pretty easy to do. I kind of like wax. It makes me want to clap. <laughs> Greg Biffle, 2.8 seconds ahead of Kurt Busch, Jeff Burton, Tony Stewart, and Jimmy Johnson in the Auto Club 500, presented by Q.
Lane Jr. just for your notes. He beats them in, he beats them up in the middle, and he beats them off. And it looks like we're hurt maybe a car length from the flag stand on. In fourth. Yeah, the time still looks pretty good in here. We're running consistent 30s and 40s every lap. He figured out a different place to run, just like he did at Chicago or somewhere last year. He's got it really good. I know Dennis Schoenfeld is interested in what's going on. It looks like if we're weak anywhere in the straightaway, it's the second half. Speedway, Greg Biffle in a Ford leading Jeff Burton, followed by Kurt Busch. So far, Biffle has led the most laps in this race, and Jack Roush at his Fords, Jeff Hammond, crowded up near the top. Real strong right now as he takes the lead from the pole sitter right there, Kurt Busch. The 16 car now showing the way. Carl Edwards. Right there, Carl Edwards is he's now broke up there in the top 10. Looking really good. All his teammates right now, just all the Roush cars are coming to the front right now. But this young man right here, he's been doing really good all day long. Just worked his way outside of Jeff Gordon right there. And Matt Kenseth has worked his way up uh, to 12th as well. As you can see right there, Greg Biffle may be leading. Carl Edwards is 8. Jamie McMurray in the 26th car this year. 9th, Mark Martin. Hey, the veteran campaigner, he's 10th. And Matt Kenseth started way back in 31st. He's already up to 12th. Greg Biffle won the Bush race yesterday here and won this race last year. Mike? Of the 33 major races held at California Speedway, Jack Roush has won 10 of them, including three here in Cup. How about Jeff Burton, who's moved up to second place? Yeah, I was just going to say, he got by uh, Kurt Busch a minute ago. This race has taken on a very similar appearance to yesterday's race. Biffle and uh, Jeff, Gor Jeff Burton chasing him down, just like yesterday, over the long run. Let's see how he's doing here. He's down into turn one. Uh, that's right at about 190 right there. 14 degrees of banking. This is where you really know how good your car is. If you can get back in the gas, come off of that corner wide open, that's when you're really handling well. You don't have to play with the throttle. You're not pushing, you're not loose. We're gonna go down into three. You can really pack it in here, get it on the bottom. Yesterday he was so good here off turn four. And he is again today, Larry, right on the bottom, accelerating up. And it doesn't sound like he's having to play with that throttle a lot off the corner, which helps that straightaway speed. Here comes Tony Stewart in that 20 car, going by Kurt Busch in the two. This is the battle for third. Yellow. Cautious out, cautious out. Debris in turn three, tracks clear. First caution of the day, it comes working lap 31. We had a late race caution yesterday in the NASCAR Busch Series when a driver's glove came out on the track. Officials thought it might be a piece of metal debris or bodywork. Through the caution, our long lenses showed it was a driver's glove, and NASCAR checked, but could not determine whose glove it was that brought out that final caution. Well, it wasn't mine. Pit stop's coming. And uh, that is uh, just went from that to a little free and a little tight haul all the way off. Road is closed. The road is closed. Bottom ten, two thirty.
Shake it loose. Be ready. Car is two cars behind you. He'll be coming around you. We'll be short, big boxes, remember. Yeah, that 96 is gonna come around it, so y'all be careful. Yeah, 10-4, if you stop on that sign, I think we'll have plenty of room there. I'll keep an eye on him coming in. Pit road, 4600, second gear, Jim, 4600. That's the start finish line. You got him, Tony Jr. Get away. Start looking left right here, buddy. Come on. Right there. Good. Oh. Get ready to go. Go, 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 go. Stay tight right there. Stay tight. Got two outside. Stay beside that 99. There you go. This is long and is riding. Fox, viewer discretion advised. Welcome back to the Auto Club 500 presented by Q Motor Oil on Fox. Yellow flag pit stops. Caution out in lap 31 for backstretch debris. And here's what happened when the leaders came on to pit road. And I think pretty much of our 40 cars still on the lead lap, everyone came to pit road, and I think it was for four tires, fuel, and adjustments for everyone. And these pit boxes, I love these pit boxes. They're huge. You, you got plenty of room to work. You don't get boxed in. You don't get crowded. Probably the biggest issue is the driver's got to hit his mark because the box is so big. And, Darrell, this is a much longer pit road than we had at Daytona. This, yeah, you just saw, they all left the pits, as you'll see here later. Uh, it was a mad rush down the end of pit road down there. Biggest thing is 40 cars on pit road at one time. Now, the speed limit line on pit road is here. The line that marks who gets off pit road first is here. And Jimmy Johnson is the first man to that line. Now, this. you know, Wheeling has got a new light that they've installed. You know, I always complained about that last section of the of the speed out everybody gets pinned for speeding out well they put a light up now so you know where it is now that was the battle between kurt bush and the two jimmy johnson and 48 i think the reason kurt bush was able to win that battle he's in that very last pit stall which is especially good for under caution because he just has to move a little ahead to win the battle off pit road there's the light i'm talking about that didn't used to be there but everybody got nabbed speed out because once you cleared the end of the pit wall you were thinking you were clear of the pits they put the light up now, and I like that a lot. Kenny Wallace gets the free pass. He was the first car one lap down when that caution came out. And let's update pit stops, beginning with Matt. Mike Greg Biffle was first on and first off pit road. Now, we told you at the beginning of the show how he made a mistake in Saturday's Bush Series race that cost him for a few segments. Well, he remembered that when his crew chief, Doug Richards, said, what changes do you want to make to try to tighten up your car? He says, I don't want to make any changes. I feel like the track is already tightening up. I want one small air pressure adjustment that I feel like we are getting better and better as we log more laps. To Steve. Matt Carl Edwards started this race 22nd, got up into the top 10, told his crew, I'm having a good time out here. He was trying different lines, said his car was just a little bit tight in the center. So they made an air pressure adjustment to the left side tires, taking air out, and they went up on the track bar. Dick? Well, Daryl, you're absolutely right about these pit boxes in California. 20 feet wide, 41 feet long. Those are the longest pit boxes of any pit road that Fox TV works in our half of the year. Kurt Busch wanted to change the chassis on his car. He has been pushing all race long, and the push had gotten worse and worse, so the crew adjusted for that on their pit stop. Car 31, Jeff Burton pitted right behind him. No changes at all at that car. Burton happy with the way his automobile is performing this afternoon. 
what I'm hearing, it doesn't sound like a lot of people were ha totally happy with their cars. A lot of adjustments made on those stops. Well, if you notice there, Larry, just for that caution, everybody has started moving all the way up around the top of the racetrack, which means the cars are not very happy right now. Let's get our first uh, singular virtual crew chief question in for the day. Will NASCAR curb rough driving by policing it more closely in 2006? Vote yes or no by texting the word crew to 191 on your singular wireless phone or going to foxsports.com. And you'll be entered for a chance to win Jeff Burton's payday at the Pepsi 400. Fantasia, what a great job singing the national anthem today. She's in Carl Edwards' pit. She's all suited up. She's ready for relief duty, it looks like. There's Troy Aikman in uh, Troy Aikman's pit. Yeah, he is. He's a <laughs> Hall of Fame racer. He said, what down is it? How much till halftime? He and Roger Staubach involved in the 96 that Terry Labonte is driving. Started 43rd, running 34th. up in 34th right yeah. now. Well, we have our Fox traditions, one at the start of the green flag of every race, and another on a few restarts throughout the day because we know for Christmas, so many of you got surround sound systems. And if you already had it, I know you've been waiting about eight months to hear this as well. So what do you think, boys? Let's crank, crank it, it up. up. Take the high road, you take the low road, and I'll get to the finish line before you. But how about this group? Here's a three wide right here. JJ Yaley in the 18 on the outside. Casey Mears in the 42 in the black car. He split the middle with his teammate Reed Sorensen in the 41. That was an ugly drag race right there. Three wide. There's teammates again. Kyle Bush in the five. Pushing Jimmy Johnson in the 48. We're riding with him here. Tony Stewart under Jeff Burton right behind them. This is a battle for third right here we're riding. Now we're riding with Jeff Burton in the 31 car back in fifth. It's a pretty timely caution flag for all these guys. They've run 30 laps there. They had a chance to kind of analyze their car. Some of these guys are probably going to make their cars a lot better. We're going to see more people running up front. See Jeff Green in that 66 just like earlier in the race on that low air pressure has got that little bit of fender rub on the tire once the air pressure builds up in the tires they start the air pressure down because they know it's going to grow over the course of a run well they got a new left side tire here this race there and the sidewall in the left side tire is a little softer and the tire compound on all four tires a little harder than last year so tires don't seem to be a real big issue to this year boy tony stewart in that 20 car chris myers in the free race did the 10 laps with him there you see he got two positions Coming off turn two, he got that good run down low and was able to go by Jimmy Johnson in the 48 and Kyle Busch in the five. But you know what I liked about it? Tony, you know, said, look, guys, Daytona is Daytona. Let's, let's move on. Uh, we can pick Daytona to death. We can, we can be all over NASCAR. We can be all over each other. We got races to run. We got a long way to go for this year, but with. Now, next up Cup is off next week. But NASCAR on Fox will be in Mexico City with the NASCAR Bush Series on the road course the Rodriguez brothers course we were there last year a hundred thousand people there on race day a lot of fans and a good race Martin Truex Jr. won it and you know what I don't know I, I have a hard time with the language but they know under they understand boogity 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 just like we do <laughs> we tried to translate that and we didn't do well we got a lot of different translations Denny Hamlin 
One of the rookies this year, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. The FedEx number 11. He's been top 10 all day. And this group elected to not run the second practice. Darrell, we talked about engine attrition there at the beginning of the show. They put so many laps on their car. The first practice, I talked to crew chief Mike Ford. He said the car was good. We decided to keep laps off this thing. Well, you gotta you gotta manage your engine when you come to a 500 mile race, and you gotta qualify and ha and particularly without the impound, you get a lot of practice laps. Very talented rookie crop for 2006. Let's meet Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin. Hi, I'm Denny Hamlin from Chesterfield, Virginia, driver of the FedEx Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS. This is my first full season next to Cup, and I'm going for Rookie of the Year. I am a huge Redskins fan. When I was 11 years old, I once stood in line for three and a half hours waiting to get Joe Gibbs' autograph. Now he's my boss. Joe Gibbs is a great guy to work for. He knows to put people in the right positions, and I'm lucky to be part of his elite group of players. I used to be a big time bowler. I once had a perfect game till the ninth frame. In Huntersville, North Carolina, there's a Reuben sandwich named after me. If I win a race, I become a filet. 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 <laughs> <laughs> now there's something to aspire to. Uh, <laughs> Carl Edwards outside of Hamlin. You know, it, it is exciting and it's gotta be, it's fun to be able to grow up and, and not only meet your hero, your childhood hero, but to work for him. That's gotta be a huge honor and a, a great feeling. Another of those great rookies, Clint Boyer from Emporia, Kansas, who came out of Midwest late models and the NASCAR elite division. And had a great Daytona 500 finish six down there. Let's check with Matt. And Denny's having a very solid run inside the top 10. Now before that pit stop, he was just screaming that the car was so loose, very hard to hang on to. But Mike Ford said, look, even though the car is so loose, you're only a 10th off the leader, but they made a significant track bar adjustment, Larry Mack. They went down two rounds. Also a big air pressure adjustment, trying to tighten up that 11 car for this run. Well, I'll tell you what else is tightening up right here is this battle for Woo. second. Tony Stewart <laughs> in that 20 to the bottom of the racetrack goes below Kirk Busch in the two car. Yeah, he did a little home improvement on the old two car there. You don't, you, when Tony's car is right, he's gonna run the bottom of the racetrack no matter where we're at. Yeah, he always kids about guys being bottom suckers, and he's one of them. Right around that white line. Forty-four laps complete, only one caution flag so far. That one for debris in the back straightaway, and 41 of 43 cars on the lead lap. Only Stanton Barrett, who made an early pit stop, and Michael Waltrip, who stopped with the hood up under that caution, are one lap down. Greg Biffle is the leader. He is 1.3 seconds now ahead of a fast closing Tony Stewart. Nothing's wrong with a little bump and run. What is Budweiser? It's bright. Closing on him now, one back. And clear. 45 with a run, just half back. There in the middle. 
outside. All right, 18's inside. 18's inside. Inside. Clear low. Clear high. a lot of this competition but so far look at the lap times he is almost mirroring the 16 car greg biffle but he did give up a little bit of ground you know working his way through traffic so uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not he can get a uh, little bit of pull off the draft that you get here at california speedway and be able to close in on greg biffle and see how really tough he is and daryl area and mike pointed out matt kenseth one of the greatest climbers so far all the way up to sixth uh, not too far away from uh, tony stewart not too far away from tony stewart <laughs> that could be real interesting as we go deeper in this race because I think if Matt can ever get up that lead group he's got something for him. All right let's rejoin Mike Darrell and Larry. Tony Stewart was closing on Greg Biffle but he's not been able to gain any ground he's still 1.3 seconds behind. There is Stewart. OAD is overactive adrenaline disorder these three Ford drivers have it that's what they've gained as they move up through the field since the start of today's race right this moment five of the top ten drivers are in Ford Fusions and the fastest mover of them is that 17. He's still on the move and ironically the fastest movers are all Roush cars. Another jack attack. Roush has three cup wins here. Five in the Bush series counting the three by the John Reiser own car or excuse me five plus the three of the John Reiser own car driven by Matt Kenseth and two truck wins including Mark Martin yeah, here Friday night. I was night. gonna say Mark won Friday night for Jack. Biffle won yesterday for Jack, and uh, they're looking pretty good today for Jack. When I look at McMurray right there in that purple 26 car, remember, he started back in 25th. He's up to 7th. Now, this race team with Kurt Busch won this race three years ago, but McMurray has five starts here. He's finished in the top five three times, so he likes this racetrack as well. He runs in 7th right now, Steve. Mike, he likes this race car a lot. The only comment he's made to Jimmy Fennick was it's just a little bit snug. Jeff Gordon, past winner here, has had a kind of uncharacteristic day. He's now running in 17th position. Matt, what's up with Jeff? He started the day out ninth, as you can see on the bottom of your screen, currently 17th. Now, Steve Letard, his crew chief, told me they expect good things this weekend, but this is some recent conversation on the radio from Gordon to his team talking about how bad he is struggling with that 24 car. Made it all the center. I'm just so bad getting in and off. It it is, we don't even need to worry about that tightness. I mean, I, I'm sliding to the back end before I ever can get to the corner. Now, Latart told me that they don't expect miracles, but they feel like each week the goal is just to get better, and they've got a lot of work to do to get that 24 car better on the next stop, formulating a game plan of what changes to make to the 24. Well, to me, what's so ironic, you see the 24 Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car running together. I think that was the biggest question over the winter. Has these two teams turned their 2005 seasons around? 
this is the type of racetrack that fought both of these race teams last year. And I think the biggest reason it started fighting them, Daryl, is when NASCAR cut that inch off of that rear spoiler. You hear Jeff Gordon talk about being loose, getting in the corner. The rear's wanting to come around at over 190 miles per hour. They just can't give these two drivers the feel they're looking for with this package, this type of racetrack. Yeah, and the, the bad news, the worst news is we run a lot of tracks like this. Yes. And two the mile and a half and two mile racetracks. Jeff Gordon, a three-time winner here in California, but in the last three races here has not finished in the top 20. Junior's been 19th or worse here the last four races. Two DNFs. Let's check up on our singular virtual crew chief question about NASCAR policing rough driving. You said NASCAR's policing it closely will curb it by a margin of two to one. Well, I think that's a great place to start with the drivers. Talk to them, see if you can get something worked out, just like we did with the no racing back to the yellow. So we used to live by that, and we all abided by it. But when it got to the point where they wouldn't do it on their own, NASCAR had to step in. Rough driving, if you won't do it on your own, we have to step in. 42, Casey Mears behind Gordon, who's battling J.J. Yaley. High up on the outside. What a start to this season he's had. More on Mears in a minute, who runs in 17th. Let's uh, Matt update the Gordon story. And Mike, when Jeff Gordon missed the chase last year, that was one of the biggest headlines of 2005. But the team actually felt like it was a blessing because it gave them an opportunity to test on all those mile and a half, two mile tracks that make up the chase. And when you look at his stats, it's kind of surprising when you go back to October 2002 to current day, he has not had a lot of success. In fact, his only wins on a mile and a half, two mile track, Atlanta in October 2003, and right here at Fontana, May 2004. So they know this is the type of track configuration they really have to improve on if they're gonna get this team back to championship caliber. Right behind Gordon, Casey Mears. This is a home game for Mears, who is from Bakersfield, California, moves from the target car over to Haviland Colors and the 42 for the 2006 season. The young, the newest of the Mears gang is Uncle Rod, uh, Rick Mears, four-time winner of the Indy 500. Casey's dad, Roger Mears, a legend in off-road and desert racing. And in this period video, who's that little fella? He's a young kid who went on to drive Indy-type cars, win the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona this year, and last week, Run second in the Daytona 500. Combine that with his top finishes at the end of last season, and a lot of people think this could be a breakout year for Casey Mears. Yeah, you take the Daytona 500 in the final three races of last year, the last four races, three top five finishes, the hottest driver in the four race period. On your left, the lead battle, Biffle and Stewart in the 20. On your right, the fourth place race, as Matt Kenseth in the 17 takes it to Jimmy Johnson. That 20 car, Tony Stewart, he has been mowing Greg Biffle down. Yeah. About two to three tenths a lap. He has, and the thing about Tony's car, it is so consistent. He runs in the 41s, high 41s all the time. Greg's been pretty consistent, but he's in the low 42s just enough. Boy, he about ran out of racetrack, had to snatch the thing back to the left, but he stayed in the throttle. Looks like he's going to almost complete the pass going down the front straight away. Look, he that's did a, not intimidate Biffle the least bit. Biffle's still in the gas. And Biffle uh, is one of those kind of guys that uh, you don't really want to get riled up too much. And Biffle just stayed in the throttle, got that good run. Now, if Tony Stewart in the 20 can get the run off too, and he does, slides up in front of Biffle to take the lead. Now, Michael Waltrip in front of them has his arm out the window, waving everybody to the inside of his car, which will go two laps down. And Tony was waving back at Biffle, too, because he could see the way Biffle came back on him with a lot of aggression. Hey, dude, I'm sorry. He put that hand out there, gave him a wave. Because that was a very aggressive move. Easy to do off turn four. You come in here, you got a lot of push, got a lot of wheel in the car. Coming, 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 run out of track. Die. No harm, no foul. Once again, at about 180, 85 miles per hour. So Tony Stewart, the defending and now two-time Nextel Cup Series champion, into the lead at lap 61. Dick? 
Well, as Tony was closing on the leader, Mike, I told you he was feeling light and breezy, and he just came on the radio and said to his crew, here, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> You Matt Kenseth has made quite a charge through the field in that DeWalt 17. Yes, he has. And I think the two cars that showed so good in yesterday's practice on long runs, maybe not the fast cars, they're showing up now, and it's Matt Kenseth in that 17 and our leader, Tony Stewart, in that 20. Sixty-two laps complete, 188 to go, and Tony Stewart out in front of Greg Biffle. About 20 laps from a pit stop, Tony Jr. Stopping on lap 82. Coming to lap 65, Dale Jr. About 10 car lengths back to the seven now. but clear, clear by two. Here, work in the bottom, still clear.
front end is just sliding. A, I think the track's actually cooling down just a little bit, which will make the car go tight. Plus, I talked about a full fuel run. They've burned all that fuel off the rear of the car. It's gained nose weight, which makes it tight. Darrell, this is what we talked about at the top of the show, how your car works at the start of a long run and what you've got to do to maintain pace, if not improve it, as you get toward the end of a run. Well, the good news is it's a 500 mile race, so you're going to get a lot of chances to adjust on it. And we're going to go through a number of changes here. Condition wise, it's all in the driver's hands. What he tells the crew chief and what adjustments he needs. Ninth place driver is Reed Sorensen, the 20 year old from near Atlanta, Georgia. One of Chip Ganassi's young promotions to the next Hill Cup circuit. The other being David Stremme, Stremme in the 40. Here's Sorensen in the Energizer number 41 he restarted 17th he has now moved to ninth yeah he started back in the 29th position dw yeah he's kid's got a lot of talent i think he's got a really uh he's gonna do really good in this series yeah he was the 1997 quarter midget national champion and that was he was not very old in 1997. no he's a young man now so uh, he's got a lot to look forward to and chip i think chip's done a good job of turning his program around you know with mirrors uh, having the success he's having Got uh, Sorensen here and Strimmy. Uh, I think he's doing a good job getting his program turned around. Matt? And that 41 car having a, a good run, Mike. Also, his crew chief, Jimmy Elledge, making note of the fact that we are now in cloud cover, so his driver be aware of how the track will change with the clouds out. But his driver also said that the car is good, but Reed said the brake pedal is going almost to the floor. And Daryl, I will say this high speed racetrack, as I walked through the garage area this morning, I was shocked at how many brake duct hoses that these guys had on the front of the car cooling the brakes. We know also they're trying to cool the tire to keep the front air pressure down. A lot of brake ducts on these cars. Uh, that's really hard for me to believe. I mean, it's a high speed racetrack with, uh, if we had our telemetry in, I don't think you'd see guys touching the brake maybe, but I can't imagine using a lot of brake. These pit crews stand idle, but not for long. We'll be back for Green Flag Pit Stops. Tony Stewart leads Greg Biffle and Matt Kenseth in the Auto Club 500, presented by Q Motor Oil. Down on the line. About four, five, four, four, five, four. So we're going to have to pin. Just keep being smooth. You're doing fine.
24 inside on the line. At your door. Clear. Inside on the line. Let's come this time, let's come this time. Four tires round in the left rear, half up on the track bar. Let's do a pin this time, 4,400, second gear, 4,400. Clear by 30 behind you. Feeling of that 99. Reed Sorensen also stopped. There's Sorensen top of your screen. Terry Labonte is in, and we expect Tony Stewart this time. Casey Kane on pit road. Jeff Gordon is in. Casey Mears. These are all green flag scheduled pit stops. Kenny Wallace, Dale Jarrett pitting. Kyle Petty is in. And Kenny Schrader. Here's Matt. Jeff Gordon just in, pulled around the 96 of Terry Labonte. Now Steve Latart told his driver, we need to get you better, just a little better, on newer tires because we feel like we're decent on the old, making some headway. Air pressure adjustment, he's away. To Dick. Tony Stewart on his way down pit road just moments ago. He told the crew that the car was exactly the way he liked it. It's better now than it was at the start of the race. So don't expect many changes on this automobile on this pit stop. Should be a nice clean stop with four tires. No wrenches in the back window. Two full cans of fuel. Stewart all by himself. Nobody in front to block him in. He's all alone and there he goes. Jeremy Mayfield in and out. Jeff Burton is in. Brian Vickers. Robbie Gordon. On the left of your screen, Denny Hamlin in the 11. Clint Boyer, Mark Martin, Ryan Newman. Elliot Sadler, who struggled today. Scott Riggs, Joe Nemechek, Brent Sherman in the pit lane. Tell you what, Kurt Busch in that two car, he just hit pit road. He almost did not get stopped, but almost running over the back of Jamie McMurray in the 26 car right at the entrance. He came on there pretty hot. I think he may have gotten it woed up in time. Kevin LePage, Bobby Lavani, the Bush brothers, Jimmy Johnson, Matt. And the 48, Jimmy Johnson in, already in work on the left side as Dale Earnhardt Jr. comes in as well. Now, Jimmy told his interim crew chief, Darian Grubb, that the car is good. It needs to tighten up a little bit, but not as much as you tightened me up last time. He's away. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in, going to work on the left side, and he's away as well. To Steve. Matt Kenton hits his pit box to the attention of Robbie Riser and their crew. He made no adjustments on the first stop. On this stop, they're going to add half a pound in the right rear and take half a pound out of the left rear. Matt Kenton has gone all the way from 31st up into the top five. But most importantly, Kenseth stayed out long enough to lead a lap and pick up those bonus points. And this is right there at that 45 to 50 lap window of fuel that we talked about at the top of the show. All these are routine green flag pit stops. Everyone changing four tires, dumping 22 gallons of fuel in the car, plus major adjustments on a lot of them. Brian Vickers will get a pass through penalty too fast exiting pit road. And what pass through means, he has to come back on the pit road, maintain 55 miles per hour. He does not have to stop in his pit box, but it's just like driving all the way down pit road at the pit road speed. Either way, he's gonna go a lap down because here comes the leader now, Tony Stewart. Uh, he's at the line right now and Vickers is not at the end of pit road, so that's gonna cost him dearly. So we've completed the first green flag pit stop of the Nextel Cup season. All the Daytona 500 stops were under yellow, and we cycle through Tony Stewart, the defending series champion, back in the lead.
bark down a little bit there. Hard to tell from here, but keep being smooth. You're doing a nice job. That's four. Got the breed, June. I got the lucky dog. I'm sorry I had to be Martin, but I think I got it. I'll eat him. Right now, we've heard that the uh, the cautions for debris. Uh, out in of the turn two. Track. Yeah, I think that's what they were saying just a second ago. So this right here is going to give some of these guys that had a bad pit stop an opportunity to kind of gain back up. And for a guy like Elliot Sadler, he's probably breathing a sigh of relief. This has been a visa race break. And no matter what life takes, life takes a visa. Let's check in now with Steve Burns. Well, Chris, listening to Jamie McMurray, his car had gone from loose to tight. In fact, when the caution came out, he said, that's terrible. We need to make some big air pressure adjustments. So crew chief Jimmy Fennig's going to make some adjustments to that 26. They're coming back to pit road. Well, Tony Stewart said his car is just a little bit on the free side, and they decided to let the crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, decide if they were going to re-pit the car or not. Zippy said, bring it on in. They're going to put four new tires on it, despite the fact that Tony was happy with it. Down pit road, Kurt Busch had a great pit stop last time around. 12.6. They adjusted both the air pressure and the wedge. Matty. Greg Biffle, the 16, runs in the second position now. His car is on the tight side. He's hoping the sun comes back out because we talked earlier how his car was loose and it was tight. They're battling the weather issue. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment on the stop as their guys are up on the wall. And you mentioned earlier, Mike, about the 25 speedy. He was one of the guys on the pace lap that could not get a consistent tack reading because he said the pace car wasn't running a consistent speed. Well, that's what caught him. It looks like most of the lead lap drivers are coming in following the leader, Tony Stewart. Yeah, this early in the race, not a surprise, even though it's only been 10 laps since they were on pit road. You can see right here, Tony Stewart in the 20, Greg Biffle in the 16, Matt Kenseth in the 17, already out, and Carl Edwards in the 99. You saw Michael Waltrip come in with those leaders and for raising the hood. He has laps down, wasn't eligible to pit, but he's got problems. And gas is done on Tony's car, a little long with the uh, left rear as Matt Kenseth leads the race off pit road ahead of Kurt Busch and a long stop for Stewart, who came into the pits as the race leader. He's going to come out, I believe, outside the top 10. Well outside the top 10, yeah. Yeah, as quick as Matt Kenseth made it off pit road, it looks like that Robbie Riser may have rolled the dice with only about eight or 10 laps on those tires and went with just two right side tires. We'll find out. Good call. I, I don't think that's a bad call right here. Get out there, get that track position, get out front in that clean air. Well, when you started as far back as he did, and now you are up, up front on a call like this, I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's a great job. There it is right there. That tells the tale, but what a close call because Michael Waltrip in the 55 was trying to get into his pit box as Kenseth was leaving. Kenseth had every reason, he and Robbie Reiser there, to expect that pit stall would be empty because the car pitting in front of them was not a lead lap car. Didn't work out that way, though. I, 
it looks to me like we're going to have cloud cover now for a while. I can't see any real, real big breaks in it or anything. Your wheels, I, I put the input to it, um, but as I'm driving tight, it's still edgy loose. After it, it gets a little tight on me, I, I get the confidence to blast it in there, but then it, it still gets edgy on me when I'm trying to really carry some speed. Or I'm maxed out on my track bar now, but I can still, still do a little bit more with the air pressure. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to tighten you up more in the center if I do too much to help you off, though. Or we'll, uh, we'll see how this all unfolds here and maybe start bringing up the center again. Try to get an update about every 10 laps or so. Temps and everything still look good? from Quaker State. Unleash all your horses. Here because this is later on in the race and all those cars on the inside, they are one or more laps down, so it's like a double file restart like we had at the start of the race. All the lead lap cars to the outside. Yeah, we'll see a little three wide racing here now. Uh, it'll get a little hectic. Got to be careful on these restarts. Matt Kenseth leads them down to the green. Kirk Busch, Greg Biffle, Carl Edwards, and Ryan Newman. The first five on the outside lane. Kirk Busch in the two gets a good run on the high side on Matt Kenseth. Remember, he has four tires. Matt Kenseth in the 17 has those two right side tires. <laughs> Look at that mess. Holy cow. <laughs> Tony Stewart lost 14 positions on pit road what happened there dick just a whole pile of things that happened on pit road it started with jet chandler the front tire changer he just played missed the lugs on the right front slow coming around to the other side of the car then jody fortson the rear carrier got his hand caught somehow or another within the car right now fortson has his hand stuck in the team cooler trying to ease the pain on his fingers so a bad stop i bet if tony stewart had that to do all over again he'd have stayed out rather than making that pit stop mike to steve well dick carl edwards said that his car was just a little bit too free at the start of that run but he also told crew chief bob osborne that the car was coming to me so what they did was just to make a small air pressure adjustment half pound in both left side tires mike Boy, Matt Kenseth is making that strategy look pretty good as he rocketed right past Kurt Busch to retake the lead. Yeah, those rights had to catch up with the lefts, or the lefts had to catch up with the rights, whichever way. The air pressure, exactly. yeah, the air pressure was down on those right sides they put on the car, and it took probably a lap, lap and a half for him to come in. But now Kurt Busch in the two has his hands full with Matt Kenseth's teammate Greg Biffle in the 16 for second. Matt Kenseth, last lap. Wow, 39-67, his best lap of the race. And you can bet one thing, and Larry and Jeff know this, every crew chief on pit road is saying, whoa, two tires, not a bad way to go. He, he was the guinea pig. Yeah. They were all saying, let's see what happens. Now they're saying, oh, boy. Well, I'm thinking with the track having cooler temperatures, that certainly helps be able to, to, to adjust to two right side tires. Has more grip. Let's get some other pit stop updates. Here's Matt. Now, Mike, we already told you about the air pressure adjustment they were making to Greg, Greg Biffle's car. Now, he looked up in the mirror at one point under caution and saw that the 99 Carl Edwards was there, and he asked Doug Richard. Now, did Carl get up there by running the high side, wondering if he, like a lot of other guys, had moved up to the high side as the track continuing to change? They were chasing the track. He says, no, they just had a great pit stop. 
but he also came on the rear and said, you know what? It looks kind of like the old days when you look up at the scoring pylon, and when you look up at the pylon, it was like all the old Roush guys. It was Biffle, Kenton, Kurt Busch, Carl Edwards, and the six of Mark Martin. And that would be a jack attack. Stewart trying to regain ground lost on pit road battling Jeff Gordon for 11. Jeff Gordon has led the most laps at this racetrack. I think it's 410 laps he's led here. You know how many he's led in the last six times here? One. So this place has not been good to him since early on. You can see Tony Stewart wave his left hand out the window. Thank you for a little give and take right there early in the race. Remember these two at Daytona, there wasn't a lot of give and take early in the race over in turn two. That's right. They got together, knocking Gordon's car out of alignment and damaging the arrow on Stewart's car just a little bit. But you're right, that was early on. But I like what Jeff said. He said, you know, we could both take a little blame there. That wasn't like pointing fingers at each other. I could have lifted. He could have let me in, so forth. So that's that's racing. Good hard racing. Now let's take a look at Ryan Newman in the 12 car here. Remember, he started this race in 11th position. He was just about to go a lap down when that last caution came out. But Matt Borland, his crew chief, elected to go with two right side tires, try to get that track position with some adjustments. He's up there in the sixth position now. Riding with Casey Kane right behind Newman, both in Dodges. Got one in Intrepid and one in a Charger. Sixth place battle. The okay. Dodge Charger new last year is the body style and designed around an aero package that's no longer used. NASCAR trimmed one inch off the top of the rear spoiler and that made the Dodge Charger a little unsettled. And well, NASCAR doesn't care which one you run. You can run anything within a three-year period. So this year you can run the 04, the 05, or the 06. Yeah, they just feel like that the balance of the car is much better with the Intrepid and the Charger down on the inside, the Intrepid on the outside. Very similar, but just a little bit of difference in arrow. Our Dodge is trying to charge to the front. They're the first three of them in the race. Bush, Newman, and Casey Kane. 100 laps next time by 150 to go as Kurt Busch who started from the front row currently runs in third. All right Kurt I'm trying to fix the radio here I got a big antenna attached now can you copy. Ten four, you sound like a million bucks. Uh, thanks for the two tires. Appreciate it. I don't, can you hear me. Oh yeah I can hear you fine. It's Roger talk to him on the front straighter then you can hear we can hear you loud clear and also him. Yeah ten four, Roger he heard me I got a bigger antenna attached now. Yeah, two four. I got you now, Roy. Hey, I'll take a water bottle. Next pit stop. All right, the last voice was driver Kurt Busch, crew chief Roy McCauley, and Roger. Roger Penske, the car owner. And I think the problem, pit road here, it, it has sweets right behind it. And that was Roy McCauley saying, I, I'm away from the little antenna on my headset. I now have went to an antenna that extends up above the pits. It would be like those yellow poles right there you see right there. That's what he had to go to because I think he was getting interference from those sweets when Kurt was on the back stretcher down. to the car to the spotter up on the roof all part of a winning effort Greg Biffle out in front of teammate Matt Kenseth by 1.3 seconds Kurt Busch a light distance behind
In Southern California, Riverside International Raceway, a road course just to the east of here, and only a couple of miles west, Ontario Motor Speedway was a two and a half mile replica of Indianapolis and operated Cup and IndyCar races for many years. Kenseth in second, trailing Greg Biffle by one second. As Roush cars occupy the first three spots, we're not far from the House of Mouse. Could this place become? The House of Roush. Yeah, there's the other one right there. Carl Edwards in the 99 car. You heard, heard Jeff Hammond talk about dead last at Daytona. He's trying to make a strong recovery here. And there's a, a graduate from the University of Roush right there. Kurt Busch drove for Jack the last five years, moving on to Penske Racing in the two car. He's in fourth right now. Yeah, you said candy. I think he already has. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark Martin, the longtime leader at Roush Racing who retired at the end of last year unretired because Jack needed a driver for his number six car this year and Jeff Corns on the screen here I said in the last six races in the battery last three bad, races battery, bad. battery trouble for Jeff Gordon in, and these teams have most teams carry a secondary battery and it sounds like what Jeff did is flipped over 
to the secondary battery, and it seems like that maybe fixed the problem. He must have seen the voltage going Airport down. and like on battery two. Let's set the air conditioner everything off. Make sure we got an alternator. Shut everything off. And what Steve Letard, his crew chief, is telling him, cut everything off you don't need, like your helmet blower or anything else. Let's make sure your alternator's charging, which is what the volt gauge will tell him. Yeah, and I said the last six races. The last three races, he's only led one lap. Because he won here in 2004, and he led quite a bit. Is that correct? Wrong again? Only four drivers have led this race today. Now there's a look at it, Dan. The gauge is on the dashboard. The big one is the tachometer showing the engine speed. And you'll see all the little ones right there. One of them would be oil pressure, oil temperature, water temperature, and one of those would be a volt gauge. And you normally want about 13 and a half, 14 volts on that gauge. Gordon continues to run laps in the 42 second range. That's about four tenths behind what the leader is running, but it is still competitive pace. Next Sunday, we'll be at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez in Mexico City with an NASCAR Bush Series. And here comes Stewart. Seventh place, working on Kurt Busch for sixth. And it's probably gonna take him this whole run to recover from those problems on pit road. Dick Bergeron in Stewart's pit with an update. Well, I've been watching his lap times, Mike, and lap after lap, Tony Stewart has had the fastest car on the racetrack. He's been on the radio asking where other people are running. He's not satisfied with being the fastest. He wants to go still faster. Couple of near misses today involving Tony Stewart. First while racing Greg Biffle. Some time ago, Stewart's car slides up. And he has to wiggle it just a bit to stay off of Biffle. And just about 10 laps ago, Darrell, the car slides up almost into the path of Jamie McMurray. Yeah, he looks like he's got his hands full right now. But that was almost in the same place right there on the exit of turn four. And here was the problem on pit road while changing the left side tires. The uh, rear tire changer still has his hand in the fender well when the car comes down off the jack. Yeah, he's locating the tire up in there, and I guess he got his hand. He didn't get his hand out quick enough. Just remember, these guys are trying to change four tires and dump 22 gallons of fuel in about 13 and a half seconds. So Stewart, a leader of this race for 28 laps, he's led twice and now is in sixth place and rebounding. He is the first Chevrolet in the race behind the fifth place Dodge of Casey Kane and the four Roush Fords at the front.
Good corner there. Come on. Eleven closing fast. Just one back now on the bottom, the very bottom, the eleven car. Boy, come on, still there with the 12, still there. And clear. Good job, bud. Hitch box now, hitch box. Catch inside, inside the 12, inside. Just one back now, inside, inside, inside. They're all around. Still there. And clear. Let's put more weight this time. by Kihan Radio to the crew just moments ago that he had a tire going down. He diagnosed it as a left front, and indeed, as he comes down pit road, there is no air in the tire. The tire is on the inner liner, and that's it. Moments before that, he had radioed the crew and asked if anybody minded if he broke up that little Roush party in front of him. It was all Roush cars all the way to the lead. Now he's going to have to start at the back and pass car after car to try to win this race. To that. Dick down in the 42 pit, Mike Brill and the Haviland guys looking over the tires that came off Casey Mears' car. They believe they've got a flat, possibly a cut tire. Goodyear engineers down here as well. They believe possibly contact with another car will give you more information when they get their diagnosis. But for Casey Mears and especially Tony Stewart, I think where they are, are lucky here, we're within about eight to 10 laps of that green flag stop. Now they need this to cycle through these green flag stops. But the biggest thing, Daryl, it happened at a point of the racetrack they could get to pit road without tearing that fender up. Yeah, he lost some time, but it was not disastrous. So he uh, he's not in terrible shape, Tony, I'm talking about. Dick? Well, Tony Stewart just came on the radio and told the crew that they shouldn't get rattled about this, that they've got plenty of time to get the job done. they got a great car, just stay with it. Stewart and Mears are now both one lap down as you look at the remains of the tire off the Home Depot number 20, the left front. And here's our leader, Greg Biffle, putting a lap on Kenny Wallace. And that's what you want to hear the driver say, you know, pump the crew back up because they got down, they got discouraged, but he says, don't worry, guys, I'll get it back. When Tony Stewart says, I'll get it back, he will. And honestly, what in the perfect world, what Tony Stewart needs of that 20 team is to cycle through these green flag stops and then hopefully get a caution that will put them back on seat because right now he's going to be out there running about a second a lap faster. Just look how he drives by Jimmy Johnson in the 48 on those fresh tires. Stewart's last lap nearly as quick as race leader Greg Biffle. Let's get out of Chris and Jeff at our Ford Cutaway Car for a State Farm safety update. 
And Mike, there's a lot riding on uh, your tires. And the tires in this race, NASCAR has allowed certain things that help the cooling and protection of these tires. And Jeff will help illustrate that. Yeah, Chris, first thing is right now, this is the inner liner tire that goes inside the tire. In the event you have a tire go down, it helps you get back to pit road safely. But one of the key things about a tire is you want to make sure you protect is the inside bead close to the brakes. You don't want this bead to fail during the course of a race. And to help that, NASCAR has allowed the team to put what they call blowers. This is one of the blowers that Larry McReynolds was talking about earlier. This mounted up underneath the nose of the race car, pulls air in, and then it is blown in this area right here close to the brakes to keep it keep it uh, cool you can see this is where the rim and the bead sit so close to the brake caliper and that's where sometimes the temperature will come from nascar is determined that to make sure you keep these guys safe you also have an ability to blow this air in here to keep it cooler so that you don't have a problem in the event uh, of too much heat and the moments ago we saw tony stewart come into the pits right where we are jeff with that left front tire front yeah, he did have a left front tire problem. I believe man run over something on the racetrack. But that's where, Chris, the safety interliner really came into play. One of the uh, crew chief members said they have eight sets of tires for today. They hope that's enough. It's been a safe report for the four foot a cutaway car, right? Thanks, Chris. 127 laps. We're just past halfway. One of the changes for the tires here this year is a softer left side sidewall. And so you let the air pressure down, and they've got a little sidewall change. You can tear that tire up. And particularly these crew chiefs, and Larry and Jeff know this, they get more and more aggressive with the air pressure as the race goes along. That green 18, for 11 years, we've seen Bobby Labonte in that car for Joe Gibbs Racing. J.J. Yaley took a big load on his shoulders, moving up to cup and stepping into this car. And early in this season, he's doing a heck of a job. Sitting there running in sixth position. He was caught up in someone else's wreck at Daytona. Had a great qualifying run, and he's been in the top ten for most of this race. Right behind him, Jamie McMurray in seventh. Kind of an up-and-down day, but has hung around the top ten most all day. Five Fords, four Dodges, and one lone Chevrolet, which would be Yaley, fill the top 10 right now as we come up on 130 of 250 laps in the Auto Club 500, presented by Q Motor Oil.
quick. He's a lap down. He's on fresh tires, about two back. Inside, on the line, all by himself. Good lap, probably run somewhere between three and five more laps. Virtual crew chief question. Will Greg Biffle complete the Bush Cup sweep today? It's never been done at California. Yes or no, text the word crew to 191 on your singular wireless phone or go to foxsports.com and you'll also be entered for a chance to win Jeff Burton's payday at the Pepsi 400. Now Pit Road's really getting busy with his green flag stops. Jimmy Johnson in the 48, Reed Sorensen in the 41. Matt Yoakum starting to make these green flag stops. The leaders are all hitting Pit Road on their cycle here. The 48, Jimmy Johnson, and now the last stop, Larry Mack, they made a wedge adjustment. He says, though, it's still a little edgy, waiting for Greg Biffle to come in about another lap. His guys are up on the wall. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon's guys are up on the wall as well. Reed Sorensen has been in and out. In the target car, here comes Jeff Gordon with Kyle Busch down pit road. And Robbie Gordon as well. Bobby Labonte in the 43 car hits pit road, gets her woe down. Here's Matt. And Jeff Gordon said the wedge and air pressure adjustment they made on that great chip foos paint job did not help. It's still way too tight. Gonna make another air pressure adjustment. They could go about another 40 minutes or so on this backup battery. Meanwhile, Greg Biffle trying, as Mike Joy mentioned, going for the weekend sweep. The 24 is away. Biffle won't have to worry about him pulling out as he makes his way into his box. Looking for a wedge adjustment as well as an air pressure. Biffle said the car, which had been tight most of the race, has gone to the loose side, especially uneasy entering down into turn one and turn three. Going to work on the left side. Solid stop so far for the Biff. He's away. Jeff Burton is in. Scott Wimmer, Brian Vickers, Kurt Busch, Dale Jarrett. And back in is Reed Sorensen, who was missing a lug nut after his stop. Kenny Schrader, Jeff Green's in. Ryan Newman, David Stremme, Jeremy Mayfield, Kevin LePage making stops. Casey Kane, Carl Edwards comes in right with Matt Kenseth. Dick? Well, the original plan for the guy who had won the pole, Kurt Busch, was the short pit come in earlier than other people. Remember, he only took two tires on that last pit stop, but he waited, waited, waited. Steve. Matt Kenseth of the 17 in. You see Mark Martin to the 6. This is the kind of race that Mark Martin wanted. His crew chief, Pat Trice, had said this morning we'll get better as this race goes. Matt Kenseth did a great job on two tires. This time they put on four. No other adjustments. All of the Roush cars pitted on that lap, all five of them. Elliot Sadler is in. So is Dave Blaney and rookie Denny Hamlin coming out on the left of your screen. Rookie J.J. Yaley coming in. Terry Labonte's in as well. And J.J. Yaley in the 18 car, he stayed out to lead a lap to get those five points. Rookie Clint Boyer pits on this lap. Scott Riggs, Kyle Petty. Eight cars in. Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt Jr. He was not far from going a lap down before he made this pit stop. Matt? Junior making his way down to the butt guys. You can already see one of the crew members with a wedge wrench in his hand. The catch cam man going to make a chassis adjustment. They pull a tear off off the front windshield. Comes around to the left side. Also, Tony Uri Jr. watching over. And he is away. During this cycle of stops, J.J. Yaley led a lap, and Mark Martin became the sixth different lap leader today. Stanton Barrett down on the apron in the hair of the dog. Chevrolet coasting in, perhaps out of fuel. May have tried to stretch it just a little too far. You know, I was watching the two car. He's been getting on pit road really, really well today. Uh, he come in hot, and the 41 car was right in his way. 
the 41 car is kind of almost like he's baiting him up here. If, if Kurt in the two car should pass the 41 car, he'd be penalized. And the 41's leaving him room to go by, but smart thinking on Kurt's part, he just follows him down through there until he fades off into his pit box. So you got to be patient, even on pit road. Uh, that was a rookie that almost led you to make a mistake. Yeah, because Kurt has to travel the entire distance of pit road because his pit box is at the very exit of pit. Martin Truex and Joe Nemechek making pit stops. Stanton Barrett gets fuel and gets back on track. And Sterling Marlin comes in as this round of green flag stops continues to cycle through with Greg Biffle back to the lead. And what this has also done is has put Greg Biffle leading the race and it puts Tony Stewart in second. He's about four and three quarter seconds behind. Remember, he had to pit about 10 laps earlier because of that flat left front. I think the difference right here is the time lost Tony getting to pit road with that flat tire. But what's going to happen now, Larry, as you well know, everybody's going to start ganging up on him with the newer tires, him on older tires. He'll fade and the rest of them will come forward. I think there's two people that would love to see a caution now. Tony Stewart to get back on sync. Sounds like possibly Jeff Gordon and Steve Letarte to change that battery. Let's find that out for Matt. Absolutely, the three-time winner, Jeff Gordon. Now, Steve, do you have your game plan? I know you're looking for a caution to change that battery. Yeah, with that a little trouble, I think with the alternator, the battery's going dead. And all we can do now is ride it out and hope for a caution. You know, the guys here in the DuPont Chevy done a great job all day. And, you know, we're proud to carry that hot hues, and we're just doing our best. A little, little slow on new tires, but it's good on a long run. Now, he was 13th when he hit pit road for a stop. Now, he's got about probably about another 30 minutes left on this battery. Now, Jeff Hammond, when they get that caution, take us through the process of how they're going to change that battery. Matt, what they're going to try to do, they'll come down pit road like a normal pit stop, hopefully under caution. They'll pull the right rear tire off. They'll reach in. This will be the battery box right here. They'll undo the four cam locks, hold it in place. They'll open it up, disconnect it, pull it out, just like so. Reinstall another one, hook everything back up, and then close it back up, and he'll be able to go on and possibly finish the race. Now, that's Steve McCartney, and we're talking about the problem. Here's the alternator that's located on the engine. This is what actually makes the uh, power back into the battery feed to help to keep it stored back up. Probably what's happened is this belt is probably broken. And when that happens, you lose the ability to spin this alternator and produce power back to the battery. And that's what the problem is right now. The addition of these cars takes a lot of energy to keep them running properly. Thanks, Jeff. Gordon is Let's see, where's Jeff right now? 13th place. 22 seconds off the lead held by this man, Greg Biffle. Top of the show, Daryl Waltrip said, if there's one man here who could stink it up, well, be glad you don't have smell o vision because <laughs> Biffle right now is eight seconds ahead of this battle as Mark Martin takes second place away from Tony Stewart. Well, Tony, will, Tony will start to have, a, you know, his tires will go away quicker than these other guys, and he'll start falling back through the field a little bit. He'll have to pit early. He also lost a position to Matt Kenseth, Mark Martin's teammate in the 17 car. So the route boards are back to 1-2-3 in the Auto Club 500, presented by Q Motor Oil on Fox. running about a 41.25 in clean air.
The Auto Club 500 on Fox, presented by Q Motor Oil, is sponsored by McDonald's. By Sunoco, official fuel of NASCAR. Without Sunoco, there'd be no race day. By Tylenol, Tylenol Extra Strength Rapid Release Gels. Team Tylenol, think fast. And by Toyota, choose any direction as long as it's forward. Toyota, moving forward. 100 laps to go here. We may finish under the Hollywood lights and the last two Hollywood nights, the bright lights have been on the Roush drivers. Mark Martin left the truck winner and Greg Biffle the Bush winner. Common denominator, the cat in the hat, Jack Roush in victory lane, looking to make it three for three today. Here are your Q Motor Oil front runners. Greg Biffle has led 103 of 149 laps. Tony Stewart and Matt Kenseth the top three of six drivers to lead laps today. So Greg Biffle is real close to locking up those five additional bonus points for leading the most laps of the race. And what makes that impressive is it's not just one car, it's not just two cars, it's all his cars are running up front and winning races. Kind of like 2005. Yeah, just like it's all over, deja vu again, all over again. Greg Biffle, the Jackson Hewitt National Guard Ford. That's the National Guardsman of the Year. Uh, yet to be determined, but that's whose face will be on the hood of Biffle's car that they're promoting. Last year in the two Nextel Cup races here, Biffle's finishes first and second. Well, he's, he's not hurting his average right now. <laughs> he is 10 seconds in front of teammate Matt Kenseth right there with Mark Martin as he tries to trying to lap Sadler. You know, I'm going to tell you what, though, the one guy that has snuck up on this bunch, we talked about him a little ago, we're riding with Casey Kane. He started back in 13th. He's sitting there in the fourth position. Now, he's working with a new crew chief this year, Kenny Francis. Tommy Baldwin left and went to Yates Racing. But this is that Dodge Charger. This is the car that this group struggled with last year. But I know a lot of testing over the winter. Looks like they maybe have got this thing figured out in race trim. Boy, that baby's right right now. There he's running fourth, and he's moved up through there, and he's looking good. Casey Kane in fourth, Carl Edwards in fifth. Steve Byrne at Burns has both their pits. Thanks, Mike. Casey Kane finished second here in September of 2004. Then you see Kane in the nine. There's Carl in the 99. They car their cars both have the same handling characteristics right now. They're both just a little tight in the center of the corners. It just doesn't want to turn that well in both race cars. And just remember, tight is when they go down in the corner, they turn the steering wheel, but the car really doesn't turn with the steering wheel. But I think one reason these cars are starting to get tight, we've been talking about the weather, we've been talking about the cloud covering, and the ambient temperature has not changed that much, but it's the track temperature that has cooled down from about 93 degrees to the mid 80s. That gives the car more grip, but it also makes the car a little tighter, a little pushier. Darrell, this track is so wide, how much can changing your line through the corners affect uh, the handling and work through a push or help a car that's loose? Oh, that's huge. I mean, anytime your car goes through some kind of weird change and you're not prepared for it or the car is not reacting like you want it to, you got to search around. you got to listen to your spotter. Uh, so and so's running really quick around the top. Try that. Run the bottom. You, you just run a few lines here, and they give you lap times to tell you, okay, that's better. Run there. In Greg Biffle's case, there is just about any place he wants. Well, right now, it's right on that white line, and, of course, that's the fastest, best place to run. Shortest distance around this joint is right around the bottom. Our last singular virtual crew chief question, can Greg Biffle do the double at California this weekend? You said no by a margin of five to three. Working pretty hard on it right now with about 96 laps to go, but a couple more pit stops to make. 
Let's go to the leader's pit, Matt Yoko. Mike, part of that 62% is his Biffle won't sweep the weekend. May not be happy to know that the car is good. He says they feel like they fixed the issue that he had on entry, where it was too free on entry. His other big concern, though, he was wanting to know if the guys trying to chase him down were caught up in traffic, meaning, you know, his teammates, Matt Kenseth and Mark Martin, whether they were dealing with lap cars that may give the Biff a little bit of a, an advantage on the racetrack, and his spotter, Joel Edmonds, said, nope, they have clean air just like you do. Dick? In 2003, Tony Stewart led 100 laps here at the California Speedway, but the engine broke while he was leading. Today, the problem, a flat left front tire while he was in contention in fifth position. Right now, he has slipped back to his sixth spot in an exchange over the radio between he and crew chief Greg Zipidelity, perhaps done so the entire crew could hear them. Stewart said, not to worry about a thing. The car's balance is just right. We've got a shot. We're going to be fine. Zipidelli came back and affirmed the same. These guys absolutely are not going to give up. They believe in themselves and they're hearing the right stuff from both drivers and crew chief. They have the confidence of coming off the, a championship season in 2005. Mark Martin has gone past his Roush teammate Matt Kenseth and the AAA car is now P2 second place. It's a looser this run. Oh, bud, you want me to take a pound out of the right rear? 160 same as the leader. I don't know. I was thinking about a little wedge in the left rear half of three quarters. And that's Pat Trison bouncing one thing off of his driver, Mark Martin. Did he want to change? And I think Mark says, this is what the car really feels like more. This is what I think I'd rather do. Yeah, if you screw down on that left rear just a little bit, that's putting wedge in. That's putting more pressure on that left rear tire. That will tighten the car up. Let a little air out of the right rear. It's going to soften the right rear tire. And you know the reason he wants to put it in the left rear? It raises the back of the car, puts that spoiler up in the air as well. Ryan Newman goes a lap down, as does the number one of Martin Truex Jr., the last year's Bush Series champion. That has to be discouraging for Ryan because they wanted to run the Intrepid because they thought their problem was in the body of the Charger, and today they're not getting a result with the, uh, with the Intrepid either. So that's got to be real discouraging and confusing to those guys. Dick? Well, at least Ryan Newman has had a consistent problem all day long, Daryl, and that is that the car has pushed right from the beginning. It's just tight everywhere, and no matter what they have done to that car on pit stop, it has not loosened the number 12 up for Ryan Newman. Well, what the, the, the contradiction to that would be, or, or the irony of that would be the fact when they built the Charger, it put more front downforce in the nose, which settles the nose down. That's the reason they started wanting to go back to this car, is, uh, is to try to get the balance back, as you see Carl and Roger Penske there up on the spotter stand. Well, I think something's going on, though, because even the two car now, he's Bush, is all the way back to 14. So those two cars are not performing in the middle part of the race here like I, they did in the beginning. Long runs, adapting to changes in the track and track temperature. Roger Penske was a world-class sports car driver and then became a captain of industry. They, to this day, they call him the captain. Penske Speedways built and operated this racetrack, among others around the United States. As he tries to get his cars back to the front, Roger is hands-on with this and his other race teams.
90 laps to go. About 20 laps from a stop, Tony Jr. Uh, you're looking about 15, 15 laps. It does turn better to center three or four. Still there, still there. kind of rear up and down a little bit make the engine feel like it's not performing i bet he's not complaining about it going down the front though it's definitely the win no complaints down the front dw but he does say that the fuel pressure gauge is bouncing it's fluctuating between about five and a half and six to nine so that is giving him some concern and, and we talked about those gauges on the dash a while ago. They have a fuel pressure gauge in there, and it should probably reach somewhere around six to seven pounds. And that sometimes can tell the driver if he's running out of gas as the fuel pressure will start fluctuating. And on the dash panel, that's probably the most inconsistent gauge you have. That sucker will, you want it to never go below five or six, but it'll sit there and bounce all day long. So uh, I don't think he's got a problem with anything. He's probably just running so good, leading the races. Man, I hope nothing's going wrong. Well, ever since he called in and asked that question, every lap since, Biffle has been the fastest car on the racetrack. So if he's got a problem, that's the kind of problem you want to have. If he's got a problem, everybody else's is worse. <laughs> Greg Biffle has clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps today. Mark Martin in a solid second, 11 seconds back, but unable to gain any ground on Biffle right now. No, I say Edwards and uh, Carl Edwards is a little bit quicker than Mark and uh, Casey Kane's right there real close by there. Those first five or six cars are all about the same speed other than Biffle. Now Tony Stewart in the 20 car running in the fifth position had that left front tire going down a while ago. He should be coming to pit road here pretty quickly. Here he looks like there. he's going to hit yep. pit road now about 10 laps shy of the leaders because that's when he had to pit earlier. 55 miles per hour here on pit road after being out there racing at over 180. So Stewart's hope for a caution flag to put him back on sequence did not pay off for him. It'll be some time before the rest of the leaders have to make a green flag stop. Now we say 55 miles per hour. They do not have a speedometer in that car. They have to do it by RPM that they got under the pace laps, Dick Burton. Well, crew chief Greg Zipidelli asked his driver if there was anything they could do to the car on this pit stop to help him to make the car better. Stewart told him he had to be honest that the car was just right. Don't change anything at all. So he's got four fresh tires and off he goes. And the entire crew that started this day is still working on the car despite that injury. 
Casey Mears also in for four tires and fuel. If you remember, he thought he had a tire problem the same time Stewart did. We got the report that there were no tire problems. That's the reason he's hit on pit road. Now what Casey Mears, Tony Stewart needs it to do again, just like a while ago, is cycle through these green flag stops. But pretty much I think everyone wants to see a caution except this man right here, Greg Biffle in the 16th. The last yellow flag was 81 laps ago. We've only had two today, both for debris. The first at lap 31, the second at lap 88. Well, because the track's so wide and you get so strung out here, cautions are far and few between in the middle part of the race. It's amazing, pushing toward 400 miles this race, all 43 cars that started this race are still running. But don't forget about engine attrition. We get in the latter stages of this race. Four Roush Fords in the top five, along with the Dodge of Casey Kane. pretty quick June the leaders about three seconds back Come out. Coming off pit road up ahead. Still outside. Outside at your corner. Clear low. Still outside. The Auto Club 500 presented by Q Motor Oil, delivered by UPS. UPS delivers the chance to win two tickets to any Fox broadcast race. Just go to foxsports.com, keyword UPS, and Jarrett up to 12th uh, in this race with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, the Hollywood Hotel, a time for a visa race break. Greg Biffle leading with just 75 laps to go here in California. Mark Martin, Carl Edwards, and Casey Kane, Matt Kenseth rounding out the top five. And Jeff, as we take a look and talk about pit stops anticipated here, only two caution flags so far, so it looks like green flag stops on the way unless something happens. How no, soon? Well, about, probably about eight to ten more laps right now. The rest of the field will be coming down. We already know that the 20 cars made a pit stop. And talking about the 20 car, I mean, he's one of the guys who had problems in the pits already just today. The 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, right there, a problem with the Jackman, Chris Anderson. And, I mean, the guys were really upset because it really took them, I think, out of a really good 
position early on, and all of a sudden you see on the 11 car, tire carrier right there, he goes down there, hard uh, crash by him, but then the 20 car, Chris. Yeah, Tony Stewart uh, was leading, slow stop here, 16.7 seconds, fell 14 positions, then had to work his way back up toward the front. As you can see how long this pit stop seemed like it took forever. And then on lap 122, the left front tire, he drops to 28, but Stewart worked his way back up to fourth, but is continuing to have problems as we look now. And this Visa race break, no matter what life takes, life takes Visa. And three Roush Fords, I know it sounds like we've TiVo'd this remark here, but having teammates with you up front, you don't run against each other as much as you're working with each other? Well, I mean, you won't get up here and you know, dog each other. Right now, Greg Biffle is way out in front of second place Mark Martin. But, you know, I've worked with uh, Jack Rouse before. As you can see right now, there's Dale Earnhardt Jr. right there. You can see Greg Biffle, the leader right now. He's closing up behind him, and, I mean, he's, he's struggled all day long. He's never really quite got on pace like he'd like to. He's been hanging around about 18th or 20th all day long. But right now, uh, that basically medi mediocrity is going to catch up with him because of the class of the field. Greg Biffle is catching up with him real quick. But going back to what I was going to say before about the Roush deal, he doesn't tell you how to race as long as you don't race, you know, stupid. If you're up there racing each other too hard, uh, he might get a little upset about that. But otherwise, he lets you guys run your own race, and that's what he's doing right now. These teams uh, are right now are machines. They're making it happen. We see Greg Biffle go to the inside right there. Spotter lets him know uh, as he goes underneath Dale Earnhardt Jr. Biffle on a tear trying to become the first driver to win at California from the front row. One of the things about the Roush drivers, they all have the same race car. And so they all know what each other has. They know what adjustments that they're making in the pits. And that really helps all of them in the race. That sharing of information. They know the setups each car has. They know the race cars. It really helps them in the race. There's Jack Roush right there. Now watch Dale Jr. As Greg Biffle goes to lap him and gets close up underneath his rear spoiler here. Fighting to stay on the lead lap. You can see the car gets a little bit loose, walks up the racetrack, and Greg Biffle in the 16 just drives by him. That's one of those times when you look back to see where he is and then you kind of walk up the hill, getting out of the way. Is this the classic, he took the air off my rear spoiler? I really think Junior might have just kind of glanced in the mirror to see where he is and just for a second and he lost a little bit of time. Lost a little control there. We are real close to this next set of green flag pit stops. We've already seen Tony Stewart on pit road. Here we see Reed Sorensen in the 41, Jimmy Johnson in the 48. This will be all scheduled stops. No one can make it from here though without stopping again, Matt Yoakum. And the 48, Jimmy Johnson on pit road. Now he said, I need help with forward bite. Don't tighten me up too much though. His teammate, Jeff Gordon, will pit in about another lap and a half as Jimmy's down and away. His crew chief, Chad Knauss, watching the race on television. Two more races left to go on his suspension. Chad Knauss, unapproved adjustment in qualifying at Daytona. So he is away until Bristol in March. Carl Edwards was battling for third when he peeled off to hit pit road, Steve. Mike, his car has gone to the tight side, so they're going to take half a round out of the right rear, that 99 of Carl Edwards, trying to bounce back from the Daytona 500. Last place finish, Greg Biffle hits pit road. Greg Biffle and Kyle Busch in the pit lane. Jeff Green completes his stop. Stanton Barrett in and out. Clint Boyer on pit road so is Mark Martin and here goes the leader in front of Matt and Biffle is in now Greg said that he liked how the race car was running on this segment they pulled the tear off off the windshield to help the visibility but no changes chassis or air pressure wise on the stop a few extra pumps on the jack could prove costly he is away to Steve that same thing for Mark Martin. No adjustments whatsoever for that number six car. He said his car had gone neutral. He likes it. Nick. J.J. Yaley is having the best weekend of his young Next Hell Cup career. Qualified fourth. That's his best career start. Yesterday, seventh in the Bush race. They have only made a couple of adjustments on this race car. That was early in the event. After that, it's been so good, they haven't touched it. Yaley's group with a nice pit stop. Matty. Jeff Knight already made a huge crank. 
of wedge for Jeff Gordon. Left side, it's going on the car way too tight in the center, and he said it's way too free on exit. Kurt Busch making his stop is on the left of your screen. Casey Kane has become the seventh different driver to lead this race. Matt Kisseth in the 17s on pit road. A spin entering pit road. Denny Hamlin, the rookie, locked up the brake trying to enter pit road and spun. No caution as Hamlin gets back on the racetrack, but will have to come all the way around and try to pit again. That's one of the hard things about this place. You come down there real hot. Here comes another car right behind him, and uh, that's the nine car, the leader. And it's just easy to do that right there, miss the end of pit road. Yeah, the entrance of pit road is almost right in dead in the middle of turn four. Steve. Mike Casey Kane on pit road. They just made a wedge adjustment. The car had been a little bit loose. He likes it, but it is a little bit on the loose side. Good stop. 13 seconds. You got to be 55 mile an hour on pit road, but you can be 155 mile an hour getting to pit road. Let's show you what happened to rookie Denny Hamlin. He's just so lucky here he doesn't hit the end of this pit wall. Gets out wide, just gets a little late turning down. In your own old tires, it's not gripping very good anyhow. Hamlin now entering his pit. Scott Riggs, Kevin LePage, Kyle Petty, and Bobby Labonte are in. I just think back to Daytona when he won the Bud Shootout and everybody bragged on how easily, how great a job he did getting on pit road. Only one that didn't smoke the tires. And he's had a, he had trouble at Daytona. He had to drive through his pits at Daytona and go around and come back in. Kyle Petty having a strong top 20 run today for the Wells Fargo Dodge. He pits uh, while running in 18th position and is back out. Dale Jr. is in. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeremy Mayfield, and Mike Garvey. And Greg Biffle in the 16. We've completed the cycle. He's back in the lead right now over Tony Stewart in the 20 car, who has about 10 more laps on his tires than Greg Biffle. Junior away in 14 and a half seconds. 65 laps to go in the Auto Club 500, presented on Fox by Q Motor Oil. You know, NASCAR Day is coming up on. Outside, big hole behind him, Jim. Big hole behind that seven. You're clear all around. The 20 is in your mirror. He's on about 10 lap tires. all around June four car lengths back to that seven outside clear
Roger, at the line. Take it, bud. Pit stops 159 miles an hour as Greg Biffle driving the National Guard Ford taking no prisoners as he right now has a five second lead on Tony Stewart. One mishap on pit road in Joe Nemechek's pit. Keep an eye on Dave Weiss who is the front tire carrier. He takes the tire back to the wall and then comes to either clean the grill or move a piece of tape on the front. And they drop the jack, and that's Joe Nemechek's sign to go. You don't think it's dangerous on pit road, but old Dave pops up and back to get things ready again. Upended, but okay. Nemechek is two laps back in 34th position right now. Yeah, right now we only have 15 cars left on the lead lap. The last car on the lead lap right now is Kurt Busch in that two car, and he is only about two seconds away from being lapped by leader Greg Biffle. Yeah, it just tells you how well uh, Biffle's getting around this place right now. I mean, he's putting them down every time he, he just putting them down one after another. This is Kevin LePage, the Vermonter, in the RoadLoans.com number 61. The side and closing two back side. Look at the right side of his car. Hmm. It's it's a piece of a valence that goes around the exhaust pipes on the right side. It's kind of part of the the package that NASCAR puts on the car. It's just a piece of aluminum. Uh, if it could come off, certainly we would have a debris caution as long as it stays attached. Probably not really affecting the handling of the car. No, it doesn't do much. Back up front, Greg Biffle, six seconds, 6.8 seconds up on Tony Stewart and 14 seconds ahead of third place Mark Martin after this cycle of pit stops. The lead car in this race and the leader in what has been a great day so far for car owner Jack Roush, who has already been to victory lane Friday night in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race with Mark Martin and yesterday in the NASCAR Bush Series Stater Brothers 300 with Greg Biffle behind the wheel. Steve? And Mike, we've caught up with car owner Jack Rouse. Jack, you've got all five cars in the top ten, including the leader. How do you decide uh, where to put your interest? Well, you know, I don't really have anything to say about this. The guys are fit to go. Uh, the crew chiefs are captains of the road ship. They're doing whatever they want to do. You know, there's a little bit of difference in strategies as far as who's fast at the beginning and run, who's fast at the end, but it's strictly in the crew chief's hands right now, and I just hope they don't run into one of <laughs> That's amazing. Jack's cars first, third, fourth, sixth, and tenth. So chances are they'll be running in very close proximity at some time before this ends. And caution is out for the third time today at lap 196. Debris in turn number one. Tony Stewart caught a real break there, Larry. That, that's the, that's that's the he caution needed. he's been looking for because it gets him back on scene with yep. everyone. But th what's interesting, teams cannot make it from here without stopping again. And who is the first car one lap down to get the free pass? Not him. The he's number Eight. Yeah, Tony doesn't need it. He's sitting there in second place, so he's in good shape, but uh, Dale Jr. sure did need it. Now, let's explain the free pass for the viewers that are just starting to watch NASCAR on Fox. For so many years, when the caution would come out, cars that were a lap down would race back to the finish line to try to beat the leader back there to get back on the lead lap. A couple of years ago, NASCAR stopped that for safety reason. When the caution comes out, the field is frozen. You are locked in your positions. But to still give teams an opportunity to get back on the lead lap, the first car that's behind the leader that's not on the lead lap, he gets to go around and get back on the lead lap. It's called the free pass or the lucky dog award. I'm just wondering what's uh, going on with Kurt Busch. Oh, there he goes. He was behind the uh, 
uh, it, he was in front of the leader when the caution came out. It's like they held him up for some reason. Now he's going and uh, he's going to go around and come up to the rear of the field because he was the next car to get lapped. Yeah, the pace truck picked up Bush and you're not allowed to pass that pace truck once it comes up on the racetrack unless you are waved around. So they waved him around. He'll come around, take up his proper position and Dale Jr. will get waved around to get the free pass. But we talked about a good break for Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart. It was a big break for Kurt Busch, as we just mentioned. He was about two seconds from going a lap down. <laughs> He's about a car length when that caution <laughs> came out. 43 cars started and 43 are running. The last time we had a Nextel Cup type race with no DNFs did not finish it. September 1996, North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, all 37 cars were running at the finish. Now let's just remember our keys to the race, our strategy. I've got to believe, Daryl, everyone here with about 54 laps to go, they will take four tires. This could lead to some strategy at the end of the race, maybe fuel only if it stays green, Steve Burns. Mark Martin, no adjustments on the last stop. This time he says he wants to half around down in the left rear car's a little bit tight for Mark Martin. No adjustments for Casey Kane on the nine car. Casey says he's got that car right where he wants it. Matt. And leader Greg Biffle, a lot of debate back and forth between he and crew chief Doug Richard over whether to make an air pressure change or not. They decided against it. The car was just a tick on the tight side, Dick. Tony Stewart, very pleased with his automobile, asked for virtually no changes, but Greg Cipinelli, the crew chief, has said, need you to conserve fuel. And down on Pier Road in the Gordon Pit, they are indeed going ahead to change the battery now. As Hammond to, uh, Jeff Hammond showed you earlier with our cutaway car. Now Steve Latar and Jeff went back and forth about whether to go ahead and change out the battery because the volts, it was holding at 12, but with only 16 or 15 cars in the lead lap, Gordon running in 13th. As long as they don't lose a lap here, it's a great call because they're really not gonna lose much position on the racetrack. All right, this is gonna be the battery animation here. Jeff Hammond showed it at the Ford cutaway car. They take the left rear tire off, take that aluminum cover off. There you see that Marine quick disconnect. They slide the battery out, disconnect that plug, pull the battery out, throw the new one up in there, put the disconnect back together, put the door on, and away he goes important to do this when you have this opportunity because if they're not sure if the alternator is charging putting electricity back into the battery that's in the car that thing could slowly come to a halt before the checkered flag moral of the story he could use this caution too <laughs> Caught up. 
top, top it off. I think we can make it from here. They give it one to go yet? Take it in. You got him, you got him. That's close, you got it. I want to uh, come into the green here. Okay, driver. One at 42, bud. This thing goes green, it's going to come down to the 288 and the 42, okay, driver? Coming to the green here. A lot of lap cars on the bottom now. Let's see, heat things up for under a buck. The debris in turn one has been cleaned up. We're going to come to the green with 50 laps to go. 16 cars on the lead lap. Greg Biffle, Tony Stewart, Mark Martin, Matt Kenseth, Carl Edwards. The front five, but some drivers made a late stop for splash and even tires. Okay, crew chief, 50 laps. Can I make it? Well, you're going to have to save me a little fuel like you heard Doug Richards tell Greg Biffle, but yes, Casey Mears, Dale Jarrett, and Kurt Busch all topped off when they got the one to go. Let's crank it up on the restart. <laughs> Starts a great opportunity to pass, but there's some white knuckle racing going on the first few laps after a restart okay, like just, this. You, you're, you, you make some desperate moves, and we'll watch the 11 here in the 7. Riding with Denny Hamlin. 7 just closed the door on Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. That's where Robbie Gordon made contact, and as you can see, everybody went around safely but closely. And a lot of cars stacked up behind Hamlin as a result. Now they're somewhat sorted out. Greg Biffle over Tony Stewart. Mark Mark Biffle racing as hard as he can to get away from the field, but trying to stretch his gas mileage. How do you do both? But quickly, how fast is Tony Stewart and Mark Martin? They just ran the quickest lap of the race right then on lap 202, over 400 miles into this race. Yeah, running that kind of a pace, you're not saving any fuel, trust me. Well, conditions are right. The weather, the temperatures dropped a little bit. You've made all the right adjustments. You want that baby to be as good as it can be because you're racing for the win now. Whatever you got, you got, and whatever you got, you better use it. Greg Biffle and that 16 car, Tony Stewart, both. We've been seeing a lot of cars run the high line. Both those cars are tied to the bottom of the race. Some serious, serious racing going on back here, I'll tell you that. Jeff Gordon now in 14th. There are 16 cars on the lead lap. What about fuel, Steve? Excuse me, Matt. Here in the Gordon Pit. Now, Steve Letard, you, you had your man come back down pit road. You topped him off. How close are you? Well, we're, we're real close. I don't know if we can make it, but I just want to thank all the guys here in this DuPont Hut U Chevrolet. They've done a great job through adversity all day. We've got the battery changed, and it's no secret we're struggling these two-mile tracks, but Jeff drove great today, and we're definitely building for the future. Real excited. Are you going to bring it back, or are you going to the finish? Well, we'll, we'll let the race, see how the race falls, and I'll let you know. 
I think at this point they're going to roll the dice. He told his driver earlier on the radio, don't expect to hit pit road again unless you're either out of fuel or we have a caution. And Mike, you heard how much they want to win on this type of track configuration. We said it earlier. Since October 2002, only two wins, Atlanta and Fontana on a mile and a half, two mile type track like Fontana. Well, right now, Matt Kenseth in the 17 car just drove by his teammate, Mark Martin, in the six. Now, that is a battle, or was a battle, for the third place. Steve. Yeah, Larry Mack just listening to the radio transmissions. There's Mark Martin in the six car. His crew, Bryson, has already told them they cannot, they cannot go the distance on gas. On the other hand, the nine car of Casey Kane, team director Kenny Francis, has told Casey they're pretty close. He said, if you could conserve gas at the end of this run, we may be able to make it all the way. And Daryl, about the only way a driver can conserve gas is roll out of the throttle a little early, pick the throttle up a little later on the exit of the corner. Yeah, it's not unusual to see Mark Martin pull over and let somebody go by if they're a little quicker than he is. How you save gas is just, you just don't jump back in the throttle. You ease the gas down, you squeeze it down, and uh, then you follow and draft anybody that happens to be running about like you are. I tell you, I've been watching these two cars here, Kurt Busch in the two, Casey Mears in the 42. We made a note while ago, they came to pit road and topped off. They look like they have slowed their pace down. They're just trying to keep in touch with the leaders. That may be two cars that know they can't win this race unless they do it on fuel mile. Well, that, it takes a lot of discipline to save fuel. You got to get out of the gas a little early and let the car coast and let the uh, let the engine rest every now and then. But Daryl, if you're running this race to a pace, how far do you dare let those leaders get away? Well, if you know they got to stop and you don't, doesn't make any difference. 42 laps to the finish in the Auto Club 500 presented by Q Motor Oil on Fox. <laughs> Here's. Run, you'll drive right by him. Still there. That boy, still there and clear. Now the 14 ahead of you. Try to save you fuel when you can, man. Just roll out of the throttle when you can, easy. Head to 21, very slow ahead of him. Then 21, very slow ahead of him. Forty laps to go. Forty. Oh. Next spot is the two. He's in the middle of one and two. Next spot behind is 88. He's about uh, 15 car lengths back and he's not coming. Outside, clear high. All right, try down, Shipton. Right 
there by two car lengths. Four left and about a car length and a half early, every corner. Okay, Tim Ford, just do whatever you're doing the first part of the race and you get them. Yeah, they're definitely not running you over getting in, June. I think it was better lap times that way anyway. That's my biggest thing, that's what it do, is overdriving. Back to the yellow, June, coming back to the yellow. Larry McReynolds and Mike Joy. The concern was that Stewart may have put some fluid down on the racetrack, so we have the fourth caution of the day coming out at lap 215. A lot of smoke from Tony Stewart, the defending Nextel Cup champion's car, and he will coast in. There's crew chief Greg Zipidelli. Well, Mike, this is when this is when you worry about your engine. The last 50, 75 miles of a 500 mile race, uh, these engines have been going. They've been they've been running up under green all day long. Been turning 9,000 RPM. This is when things can start to fall apart. Clint Boyer will be the recipient of the free pass on this caution. And Greg Biffle has just set a record for the most laps led by any driver in a 500 mile NASCAR race at California Speedway. Previous record holder. Another of Roush's drivers, Mark Martin, 1998. All right, here's what we've got. The strategy is out the window as far as stretching fuel, but we're going to have about 30 laps to go when this race gets restarted right here. It's been about 14 laps since that last restart. I think you're going to see all the front guys come to pit road, get four tires, but I bet you you're going to see somebody roll the dice with two right side tires trying to get that track position just like we saw Matt Kenseth do early in the race. I'm not even sure if we won't see some guys just get fuel, Larry. This is one of those potlucks right here. Will anybody stay out because the caution laps will help them conserve fuel? No, I think you got to come and get a splash of fuel. I think that's all maybe right side tires. Go, Steve. Well, DW, Mark Martin's going to take four tires. He talked to Pat Trison about the possibility of two. Pat said, let's stay with four. And undoing the chassis adjustment they made last time, Casey Kane, he leaves pit road. No changes. Back. Now, Doug Richards saw earlier in the race how four tires prevailed over two. With so many laps left, Biffle, who was four laps short on fuel earlier, as Gordon already passes by, they decided to go with four tires. He was four laps short. Now everyone's going to be good. All the lead lap cars stopped. And I think all of them took four That's tires. That's what it too. looks like. Yeah. That's what it certainly looks like. Nobody wanted to gamble. That's a good, you know what? That's one of those don't beat yourself deals. If you got a good fast race car and you take four tires, that's a safe bet. Tony Stewart out of the race. He has not failed to finish a race since Texas last April. Dear Darrell, who's going to drive for Tony? that 40 car way seven five three two one stop
want to go at the line? I think they were ahead of any kind of competition. They showed up here. It was business. I was too busy to change my antifreeze. I didn't go to AutoZone because who needs a tune-up? <laughs> if you very good competition in the sense that you could not call who was going to go with silver and bronze and so on, but not really interesting in the fact that got some great drivers lined up for Toyota and Cup. We got Michael Walter. We got. We got. Lap cars on the way. From our Richard Petty driving experience, right along. Now, when you restart right now, remember, do not pass until you hear my call. And the other thing is, pass to the right. This is where I got to watch because. On a track as wide as this one is, I've got to protect the right side. I've got to stay out next to the wall because if I leave any room out there, the guy behind me will shoot by me on the right, and that is perfectly legal. All right, you're coming to the mark, right? Get ready, get ready. Green, 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 green. Three starts are so critical, working with the guys that are beside you, working with the guys that are around you. But the main thing is protect that right side don't let anybody slip by you on the outside because once they push you out of line, the whole field can go by. Getting set for a restart, new leader. And this is the first time in the last four races that Jeff Gordon has led a lap at California. I finally got it right. And how he became the leader, that was the only group that elected to change two right side tires on that pit stop. He's changed the battery, he only took two tires. He's determined to lead this race. Now let's see how he, notoriously, historically, he runs good in clean air. Not good in traffic, good out front. As far as cars that changed four tires, Matt Kenseth, that Robbie Riser crew, they won the battle of the cars that changed four tires off pit road. 16 cars on the lead lap, 32 to go, three wide. That breaks up. Oh, no, it doesn't. Wow. And don't forget, Kenseth took two earlier in the race, and he didn't, he didn't slow down one bit. And, Darrell, you've talked about it so much. Two or four tires. Where the 24 car is good is out in clean air, but he's going to lose that clean air. Matt Kenseth in the 17 brings it to the bottom to take the lead here with 31 laps to go. Trouble. Turn four. Back of the pack. One car all alone spins at Stanton Barrett. Caution is out. The Hollywood stuntman goes around, coming off turn number four. And I didn't see contact with another car, though there may have been. There doesn't appear to be any damage on the car whatsoever, uh, as it no like doesn't look like anybody got in the back of it. At the back of the pack, up high. Yeah, he just got way up high, got in the loose stuff, and around she came. Boy, Brent Sherman just squeezes by that 49 car. Mark Truex Jr. will get the free pass. That will give us 17 cars on the lead lap. Now we've talked about the onboard radios the drivers have to talk to their crews, their spotters, and Matt, other people. Mike, if you're involved in a multi-car team, one option the drivers have, they can flip over to another channel and talk to their teammate. Now under the previous caution, this was part of the conversation between Matt Kenseth and Greg Biffle. All right, buddy. Oh, I can't do nothing except from the bottom, so. Yeah, the, the if I get by you, that's where I'm going to be on. All right, thanks for telling me that. I'm going to block the hell out of you now. <laughs> Try it. I'll just knock you out of the way. <laughs> oh, boy. Jack's going to like that. <laughs> Having a little fun out there. That is. That's what teammates are all about. NASCAR has declared this a quickie yellow. 
on a regular yellow flag only the lead lap cars can pit the first time the pits are open the lap down cars have to wait a lap to pit in this case everybody pits together they will and we'll come back cable Drop the track bar and close the shocks up. All right, let's try it. We said yes to making better decisions faster. We're all card-carrying yes men. With Sprint Business, you can make just about any place a workplace. Now you can get a free mobile broadband card with an unlimited data access plan. Yes, you can. Before you go into three, though, it might blind you when the sun hits it. Four. I mean, there were a lot of things, uh, you know, having the flat tire that got us behind, but, uh, you know, we had a fast race car, and that's real encouraging for the whole year. So I'm really, uh, really excited about this Home Depot Monte Carlo SS. It's, uh, it's going to be a good car all year. Really proud of the guys. They did an awesome job. We had a, a miscue in the pits and went from uh, leading the race to 15th, and I think we got back up to 4th or 5th and then had the tire go down. So, uh, you know, fighting back from a lap down, that was pretty impressive effort I thought every everybody did a great job and uh, I don't think we uh, I don't think we had anything for Biffle there we just we'd made a change and made it the wrong way but uh, um, you know if we'd had one more shot at it we might have been able to stay with him you were looking good we'll see you in Vegas 17 cars will be on the lead lap for this restart they're all in the outside lane as the Chevy pace truck hits pit road it's Matt Kenseth Jeff Gordon in second Greg Biffle who's led most of this race Jimmy Johnson, Gordon's teammate, Casey Kane in a Dodge, then Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, and Jamie McMurray. Hadn't mentioned McMurray much, and there he is, he and uh, Jeff Burton, seventh and eighth. <laughs> lingering around back there. Yaley's still in 10, so uh, cars, a lot of good cars still up there in the front. Paul Edwards in the 99, trying to go to the high side. He restarted back there in 10.
Boy, these restarts are something, aren't they? Larry, look at those cars just fan out and go everywhere. Three wide into the corner. I thought on that restart, I saw a little water shooting up there. We're getting a report that Dale Jarrett in the 88 UPS car is starting to overheat here with 27 laps to go. Yeah, it's that kind of, it's that time of day when all that rubber and stuff's built up on the grill, so that's very possible. There's an overflow hose at the base of the windshield on the right side. That way the driver can actually see when it's overheating, starting to spit water out. You can see it. Yeah, there it is. You can see it right there. It's just late in the race. He's 500 miles on a track like this. The old engine has had about all she wants. This is rush hour. Jimmy Johnson takes third. And uh, where did he come from? Oh, car, hey. car around. Who is it? Greg Biffle in the 16 car. We got a car spinning over in turn four as well. Kurt it's Busch. Kurt Busch. And there, nobody but. hits him. Yeah, I think Greg Biffle's engine was starting to let go on him. Well, you know, he complained about it, but I, I would have sworn it was the wind causing him trouble. Yeah, he's got smoke. But, Darrell, we went 400 miles. We didn't, have, cylinder. we didn't have any cars fall out. And now here, within about 10 laps, we've had three cars that has had engine problems. Remember, that was one of the keys to this race is engine attrition in the last 100 miles. I know we, I know people probably say, well, you said it enough, but this is, this is the most critical time when it comes to the engine department try and figure out what caused Kurt Busch to spin. I've got to believe some oil or fluids out of the 16 car. Or unless cars started checking up. Checking up, up and he got hit from behind. That's possible. Now the sun's low in the west. You see that going into turn number three. Visibility can be difficult down there in three and four. Let's see what happened here, Larry. See Greg Biffle up there going off into turn three. We saw a little bit of smoke yeah, right there. there. Coming out the right side of the exhaust pipes. Jimmy Johnson's kind of diving below that, so we don't see any oil right there. Biffle was, or rather, Bush was. Oh, he got hit. Back. He got, he got JJ hit. JJ Yaley, yeah. the green 18 car. 18 got into the got into the two and spun him. And look at this, right Whoa. down in front of who? I don't who know did he was. scare the pants off of know. right there? That's amazing. Besides himself. Now we'll see it. Was it his teammate Newman? No. Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick. 29. Kevin Harvick. My, 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 that was, that was incredibly close. There's Dale Jarrett. Get down, keep, get down. You can see the steam coming out of the right corner of his Stay where you are, keep covering. All right, you Doug Richard, crew chief for Greg Biffle. Richard at age 18. Came out of Southern California as crew chief for young Dale Earnhardt with the Rod Osterlin team. This has got to be exciting. Oh. Right this has got to be exciting. This is Come on, come on. <laughs> oh, I mean, he didn't. I guarantee oh. he thought he hit him. Nowhere in the world is there a thrill ride like this. Dick Bergman. Well, Kurt Busch is in the pits. He came here, Mike, with four flat tires. Right now, they're working on the right front corner of the car. They'd like this car to drop a little bit further on the racetrack, the nose of it to drop a little bit further on the racetrack. To Matt. And Greg Biffle talking back and forth with crew chief Doug Richard. At one point, he said, maybe I should just pull out of line because I don't want to mess up the race for the other guys behind me, like Jimmy Johnson and the nine of Kane and Jeff Gordon. Then he said, you know, I'm on seven cylinders. I still have some go left in this car. He told his spotter, Joel Edmund, just to let those guys know I am on seven cylinders, but I'm going to give it a go. And Daryl Hill probably be able to run around here about wide open around this racetrack on seven cylinders. When you see it smoke like that though, Larry, this got internal injuries. It's not going to last long. I think he probably needs to drop down and get out of the way. Denny Hamlin will be the recipient of the free pass. Jeff? Well, Mike, we've been talking about it all day, all day long as far as the amount of RPM that these uh, engines wind up going through as far as that's concerned. And Daryl's talked about it. We've been at a record pace for most of the day. This is what you call as a half of a cylinder head. Greg Biffle said he thought he dropped the valve. This right here is a rocker arm connected to the valve, and this is where it wor works as far as taking gas in and out of the cylinder head to make horsepower. The valve is actually located right here. This is a, a, valve, a valve. So if you wind up breaking a valve stem or a rocker arm for any reason, if you look right here, this is also a rocker arm, I mean a, a valve spring. 
if you break a rock arm or a valve spring, what can happen is this valve will fall down in, piston comes up, makes contact with it, your day's pretty much done. And that's probably what's happened to Greg Biffle. He's broken a valve, gotten in that piston right there, and as Daryl said, more than likely, if the pieces are flying around in here, next thing's going to happen is that engine's going to break entirely. He may not make it the rest of the way in. Uh, Mike, he's the only guy I know who carries one of these around in his coat pocket, right just in, in case here. these things happen. <laughs> Once a crew chief, always a crew chief. Thanks for the explanation, Mike. Greg Biffle led 168 of the first 218 laps. But now we come down to a restart, and the Vice Titans, 22 laps to go when they get the green. Two Roush Fords out front, Kenseth and Biffle, who's on seven cylinders. Jimmy Johnson Chevy, Casey Kane's Dodge, Jeff Gordon Chevy, Mark Martin, Carl Edwards, Jeff Burton, Jamie McMurray, Casey Mears. Who's got the best shot? I, I tell you what, I, I'm, I'm shocked. Jimmy Johnson all of a sudden is in the hunt. And I, we haven't talked about him all day long, and here he is. He loves this joint. And now with the, the 16 car out, he's got a good chance. Winner at Daytona last week. And he got his first career next Nextel Cup win right here at his home racetrack. Green flag. Uh oh yeah, there's Biffle. He had to get out of the way. He can't go. Yeah, he's having to get to the high side, and everybody's going below him. Which is legal. That's the way you need to pass on a restart. Yeah, when you saw the smoke come out the exhaust, that just tells you the engine is dying. So uh, he needs to probably just get down on the apron and get out of the way before he oils down the track big time. And right now, our leader, Matt Kenseth, he has two or three cars that's a lap down behind him between him and second place, Jimmy Johnson, in the 48 car. Matt? Jimmy Johnson told his team, Mike, under that last caution, the car is good for a few laps, then it starts getting loose and looser. And then the crew responded, but remember, you're the Daytona 500 champion. And DW, I think you can understand exactly what Jimmy said next. Yep, and it put a smile on my face to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah, and I tell you, it's putting a bigger smile on his face just being up there where he is and a shot at winning his second race in a row. And Greg, Greg Biffle, Biffle just going to take it behind the wall. Yeah, he, he, he pretty much needs to get off the track before he oils it down. Biffle's in the garage. Kenseth trying to hold back the pack for another 20 laps. And this is the battle for fourth right here. Carl Edwards in the 99 car. Remember, Jeff Gordon in the 24 only has those two fresh right side tires. And everybody else there, McMurray in the 26, Martin in the 6, Burton in the 31, all battling for positions with 20 to go. And you get that right, Larry. I mean, right now, it's take no prisoners. Give it all you got, baby. Don't leave anything on the table. You can hear them milking the throttle. They're working them. Three wide off turn two and getting serious. Now it's four wide. Casey Mears takes it below Burton. Just looking for some running room, baby. Looking for running room. And got Casey three Mears, and he passed four cars in that move down the back straightaway in the 42. Picking up the pace. Kent's is sitting there in pretty good shape, Larry. He's got those lap cars between he and the second place guys. He's in pretty good shape. But now, Daryl, big picture. Both the two cars between Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth are Hendrick owned or Hendrick powered. Yeah, well, if Jimmy can get up there, I mean, he's not even close now. So if he can get up there, obviously the 25 car uh, would get out of his way. But I don't think the Jimmy doesn't seem to be able to catch up with the back of the 25. I'm going to tell you what, the man on the move, though, we've been talking about it. Casey Kane in the ninth car, he just ran his fastest lap of the race a lap ago. What I like about him is he's rim riding. He's up on the high side. And he's got he's running where nobody is. It's good to see Casey Kane have a good run. He needs that for his confidence. I'm going to tell you what, a car that has really benefited from all these cautions. It was not that long ago. He went a lap down, got the free pass back on the lead lap. We're riding with him. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's up in the 11th place. Working on J.J. Yaley. In the green 18. The pass. That's the thing about a 500 miler. She ain't over till she's over, and it's tough right at the end. That's when it's really, really pull out all the stops. Sometimes you hold back just enough to win. But we were talking about it early in the race. As bad as these type of racetracks were for Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 18 last year, if they could come out of here with a top 10, that would be a huge shot in arm after their run at Daytona. 
Well, particularly after he struggled all day long. I mean, he's not really been that competitive, but to get a top 10 would be big. Meanwhile, fastest of all cars the last lap, Jimmy Johnson, who is a second and a half behind Matt Kenseth. Johnson's teammate Brian Vickers right there one lap down behind the leader and Johnson trying to close and make it two wins in a row to start the season. Well even if he doesn't make it two wins in a row the first and the second is a great way to start to uh, pursue your first championship and Matt Kenseth the race leader who has won an Nextel Cup championship trying to return to his winning ways Steve. Mike, it's been 13 races between victories for Matt Kenton, his last win at Bristol in the fall. Now, you talked about all the changes. We've all been talking about them this weekend. Matt has a new spotter, Bob Jeffrey, who worked with Dale Jarrett for so many years. And what Bob is doing right now is telling Matt about the 48 car. He's telling him the 48 car is having trouble getting up off the corner. So Matt knows what the problem is in terms of handling on the 48. Greg Biffle dominated this race, trying to be the first driver to do the California double, but now he's in the garage with Dick Bergman. We really thought the first time we were going to see your face was in victory lane. What happened to that engine? I don't know, but I, I tell you what, my hat's off to the engine, guys. You know, we never had, we didn't have a failure all season last year, and, uh, you know, we're just making more and more power, and you can see on the racetrack how good these engines run, and, uh, and it's just unfortunate, you know, we had a great car today. It looked like we had probably the best car. Uh, you know, the 20 was pretty tough, but uh, I think we might have been a little better than the 17, but we'll never know. In a bit of irony, Tony Stewart's car, which also just blew an engine, is parked right beside the hauler of the 16. They are parked side by side, Mike. Well, that's the two teams that finished first and second in the next Dell Cup points last year. The 20 team, Tony Stewart, and Greg Biffle is 16. 14 laps to go. And Kansas lead now 1.35 seconds. Here's seventh place. Now Mark fell back a little bit on the restart, but he's a, his car's a long run car. The more laps he run, the better he'll get. So he's, he's catching back up. He's not going to catch the leader, but he might get by a couple of these guys. Casey Mears, second at Daytona, seventh here in California. Started the year by winning the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona. What a dream season he's having so far. And that consistency and just being there every week, that really is big for uh, this early in the year. Get those points. Get yourself established in the top 25. Be around for the chase. Clint Boyer is 14th. He's one of three rookies who've been on the lead lap most all day. J.J. Yaley, Martin Truex, and Denny Hamlin are also on the lead lap. They're all racing each other. All three of them right there together. And remember, Denny Hamlin here, you see where our rookies are running right now. Denny Hamlin, an 11 car on a green flag pit stop, spun, trying to get on the pit road. And here he's still on the lead lap in the top 15. We got 12 laps to go. I don't know, Larry. You could add all those guys' age together. And I don't think they'd be as old as you and I. Probably ages not. And each other. Well, the first half of this race went just as Darrell Walter predicted. Craig Biffle went out and stunk up the show. But in the last 50 laps or 100 miles of this race, things changed and a lot. We've had four caution flags within the last 50 laps and now a big battle with Matt Kenseth trying to hold off Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, Carl Edwards, and Jamie McMurray. The 25 car Vickers is closing in on the leader, Matt Kenseth. Uh, he gets up there and starts messing with Matt a little bit. That could be helpful to his teammate. This is a battle for fifth right here. Jamie McMurray in the 26 car squeezes down in front of Jeff Burton in 31 cars. They try to go by the lap car of Jeff Green in the 66. Good recut. I mean, it's a great finish for Jamie. He's been back there about 10th, 15th all day, and here he is top five. Had a great car at Daytona. Next Sunday, we'll be in Mexico City with the NASCAR Bush Series on the road race course, the stadium course. And you will see a lot of these drivers in Nextel Cup down there next week. That's an off weekend for Cup. It's a beautiful facility. It's a great road course. I'm looking forward to going back. Jimmy Johnson fastest on that lap, but only by two one hundredths of a second quicker than Matt Kenseth. 
And with only 10 laps to go, one and a half seconds is a long way away. I'm still not sure that that 25 should be able to get up there behind that 17. I tell you, that could create a little uh, little distraction for him and uh, give Jimmy Johnson a chance to catch up. And you know, when I look at Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car running in second place, remember he's working without his crew chief, Chad Knaus, who was suspended for four races after the qualifying infraction at Daytona, working with Darian Grubb. You said it in the pre-race, Daryl. Darian Grubb just does not need to mess it up. And, and Darian Grubb in 1999 was working in a Volvo truck dealership. He sent his resume in to one of those resumes in racing. The Petties picked up on it. They hired him. And three years ago, he went to work pretty much as Chad Knauss, the 48 team's team engineer. I love what he said last week. Got the best car, got the best driver. What have I got to worry about? He said it again today. Hey, dude, you won the Daytona 500. Get on up there and get it. Johnson from nearby El Cajon trying to go two for two to start the season but Matt Kenseth has not backed off not one little bit Casey Kane from Enum Claw Washington pretty stable trying to close pretty stable at the front right now nobody's really making any headway nobody's gaining nobody's losing all that much Carl Edwards rebounding from Daytona running a solid fourth really rebound and finished yes. dead last in the Daytona 500. Finished on top of Kyle Petty's car. And Jamie McMurray in only a second race for Roush Racing. Seven seconds back in the top five though there's Jeff Burton trying to take that spot away before the checkers wave. This 31 car has been pretty solid all weekend here at Fontana. He's off to a really good start, Larry. All the changes they've been going through at Childress, it seems to be really paying off for him. Mark Martin in seventh. He spent a good part of this day in the top five. <laughs> Although you might ask Harvick. I'm not sure that he'd agree <laughs> with that. He's two laps down. Hadn't had the greatest today, but uh, certainly the 31 car has. And Casey Mears in eighth trying to hold that spot against Jeff Gordon. Making a really nice recovery. He had a what thought he had a tire problem at the same time that Tony Stewart did. And you see Jeff Gordon there hanging in there with just those two right side tires. When they made that move, they probably knew it was not going to be a race winning move, but maybe catapult them into the top 10. Yeah, and that 18 car, Larry, on a restart, he kind of falls back, can't get going. But after several laps, he comes on strong and he's chasing down the back of uh, Gordon there, looking pretty fast. The rookie from Phoenix, second generation driver JJ Yaley whose dad, Cactus Jack, longtime sprint car ace in the Southwest. Did J.J. Yaley needed this type of weekend. That race team needed this, the 18 team. Yeah, this is, in my opinion, this is the best race that J.J.'s driven so far in the, in the few that he's been in, but he's very impressive today. Trouble for Scott Wimmer. Smoke for up from underneath the car. Yeah, that looks like uh, that's probably an engine problem. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Probably out the right side exhaust. Five, Five to go. laps to go. Matt Kenseth's best previous finish here is third. Caution and out caution is out. <laughs> Only guy happy about that. Well, let's see. No, we're inside of 10 laps, so. Jimmy nope. Johnson would yeah. be happy about that. Yeah. Matt Kenseth, probably not. And I think with 17 cars on the lead lap, you know this will be no more than, than a, a two-lap shootout here at the end. You're going to see these cars at the front stay out, but, Daryl, you're going to see those cars at the back probably come in and try to get four fresh tires. And remember, on the restart, it'll be single file, only lead lap cars to the front. Yeah, you got to deal Jr. back here in 15th, and Kurt Busch, who spun there a little bit ago, he's back here in the 17th. They might come down to, you know, you might pick up three or four spots. What if have you're you got there. to lose? Nothing to lose. And don't touch that dial because we're about to see two laps of white knuckle rush hour all over you again. You better believe it. You better believe it. The most critical part for these leaders is the restart. Don't mess up. Don't spin the tires. As you heard Jeff and I talking about, don't open up the outside and don't miss a gear. It's, it's, all, it's a whole bunch of don'ts. You and I yesterday saw just how easy it is to oh, spin yeah. the tires. We were coming here. down and we wasn't going all that fast, but when we gassed that bad boy up, she jumped sideways. Now, do you stop? 
You mean if, if you're in the front? No, no. I think we'll see a little cat and mouse here, maybe a little faking out. Probably. I don't think so. I mean, it's a pretty much a no-brainer here, if you ask me. Well, Matt Kenseth's crew was up on the wall, but it was just a feint. He stays out. So does Jimmy Johnson and Casey Kane. They stay on the racetrack along with Carl Edwards, Jeff Burton, Jamie McMurray, Mark Martin, Casey Mears, Jeff Gordon, and J.J. Yaley. But as we but predicted, there comes Clint Boyer, Kyle Busch, Mark Truex Jr., uh, Denny Hamlin, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dale Jarrett, Kurt Busch, all these cars on the lead lap. They're going to get those four fresh tires. But as we mentioned, they're at the back of the pack. Oh, yeah. They're, get, they're having their own little race. <laughs> so they're now racing, they're racing themselves. Not only will we have the white knuckle opportunity of a regular restart, but you're going to have the haves and the have nots. The fresh tires against the worn tires for two laps. Well, who just went, uh oh, is probably like Jeff Gordon and JJ Yaley because these cars with fresh tires are going to be right on their rear bumper and they stayed out. Steve? Mike, interesting game of cat and mouse on the radio. Now, these teams know that other teams monitor their communications. When the caution came out, crew chief Robbie Reiser told Matt Kenseth, all right, let's go ahead and get four tires. Matt said, okay, sure. Robbie said, you know what you're doing? I do. And they stay down. <laughs> yeah. Telling everybody else, do what I say, not what I do. Thanks. DW and Larry, the guy that I don't understand that didn't come to pit road is Jeff Gordon. He came down the, the lap, uh, the caution before, got two right side tires, got kicked from the lead all the way back to ninth. Why didn't he come down and get four fresh tires? Because if he had peeled off, look at it like this. Clint Boyer came, the only guy that would have stayed out would have been J.J. Yaley. He may have had a chance to gain some positions. I think right now he's in the worst position of everybody on the racetrack with the, with the current situation. Yeah, he's, he's probably in trouble. in trouble because those left side tires have a lot of laps on them. Yeah, but I just think he didn't want to give up the position. I think it, uh, he figured he'd hold him off. He's a four-time next Hill Cup champion. Coming up next, except on the West. on their positions at the moment of the final caution flag. See, that's the other thing that Jeff Gordon could be thinking about, too. You get one shot at it, so uh, I think he, he just playing the cards. And what we have, we have 17 cars on the lead lap. The top 10 from Matt Kenseth all the way back to J.J. Yaley, the 18 car, stayed out. The first car that has four fresh tires is Kyle Busch with Mark Truex Jr., Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, Clint Boyer, Dale Jarrett, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now, if I'm in that 48 car, I'm going to run up there, and I'm going to be right on the back of that 17 until we get down here. Almost time to take the green. I'm going to fall back just a little wee bit, try to get me a good head of steam up. Maybe, just maybe, I can drive under him going in turn one and take the lead. I would say he, he if he's going to do it, he needs to do it early. And if you're Matt Kenseth, you've got to drive two time trial laps, make no mistakes, and make that car as wide as possible. Oh, yeah. He's getting him a little gap there. He's going to try to give him a little run. NASCAR right now, I can hear him now. They say, close it, tell the 48, close it up, close it up. He's one, laying back. One chance to run two laps to finish under green. Got to anticipate this start now. Here we go, getting ready. He's hearing he's Ooh. getting, getting it. And he goes. Oh, he's fun to turn. He's got that run. Here he comes. Casey Kane in the nine definitely spun his tires. Carl Edwards in the 99 pulls to the inside of him. Here goes the 48. He had a run on him. He did it. He timed it just right. He's looking to the outside, but he doesn't have the steam to do it. Here comes Casey Kane working on third place. Carl Edwards on the outside. They almost touch exiting two. Oh, he, he definitely blocked him, but I believe Kane's got the momentum going down into three. Carl's going to have to drive hard on the outside. Matt Kenseth has one win in the last 71 races trying to break through he's got a big lead as they come to the white flag one to go four. white flag for you your white flag it 
Here comes Carl Edwards in the 99 on the high side, trying to get that second spot away from Jimmy Johnson in the 48. He got a heck of a run down here in three and four in the top, but he lost a little bit of ground that time off the two. You watch him down here in turn three, though. He's going to take it hard to the outside. The new tire cars racing up three wide in the middle of the pack as Matt Kenson comes off turn number four. Ahead of Jimmy Johnson and Kenseth wins the Auto Club 500. And they're coming across. Golly, five five wide. Wide on the apron. <laughs> and the most amazing thing about it is they all made it. They did. You see Kyle Bush finishes 10th in the five car for the first time. Matt Kenseth started 31st today. That is the furthest any winner has come through the field at California Speedway. Well, he just had a miserable qualifying lap. They was so bad loose, he couldn't drive it, but uh, once they got in the race, it obviously had the second best car next to Biffle anyway. Let's show you the battle mid-pack <laughs> of the drivers who got tires on that final stop versus those who did not. You gotta watch this. This is amazing. They just watch Kyle Busch goes to the bottom. He's on the apron. Here comes the one car. He's on the apron. Now, Five this is wide. a battle for position right there. Oh, yeah. Positions. A big weekend for car owner Jack Roush. Mark Martin wins Friday. Frank Biffle wins Saturday. Matt Kenseth wins Sunday. The first time since 2001 that one car owner has won three races in one weekend in all of NASCAR's top three series at the same speedway. It's the 11th career Nextel Cup victory for the driver from Cambridge Junction, Wisconsin, Matt Kenson. And you know, I, I'm happy for him because I felt like he was a victim of a situation that was a bad situation at Daytona. Uh, had, a, had a car that probably could have been a contender down there. Yeah, he had a winning race car at Daytona. There's no question about that. So to come back here this weekend, Little redemption, I guess. Feel good. First win for the Ford Fusion in Nextel Cup. First points win. Yeah. Yes. 38 car won the qualifying race, so 150 at Daytona. But this is this is the first NASCAR or Nextel Cup win points race. Hard day's work, man. 500 miles here, about four hours. Kenseth led 40 laps today, including the most important one. His wife, Katie. Yeah. She's a sweet girl. Dick Berger in amidst the spray of victory fluids. Well, we don't need to take a shower tonight. From 31st, how did you pass so many cars today, Matt? Oh, a couple things. We had a great handling car. Our DeWalt Ford Fusion was awesome. And, uh, you know, great pick for these guys behind me. And uh, before I get all that, too, this one uh, is for Johnny Riser. You know, without him, uh, we wouldn't be racing here. And uh, it's hard not to think of him every time we're at the racetrack. But uh, these guys did a great job. Just got to thank my sponsors, Car, USG, uh, RNL Trucking, DeWalt, all our uh, great partners. And John Riser, of course, is your crew chief's dad who passed away recently. Why are the Roush cars and even the truck on Friday night so good at this racetrack? You know, uh, Jack's been working a long time to get this organization where it's at. And, um, you know, we got great people here. We got a lot of loyal people. We got people out that want to work hard and want to win. Uh, I've been I've been very blessed to have such a, a great team that works so hard at it. And uh, feel bad for Greg. He had the best car today, but I thought we had a second or third best car. Well, Jimmy Johnson gave you quite a run on the restart. Let's go to Matt. He's with Jimmy. And for 30 of the last 60 races, Jimmy Johnson leads the points. What a great run right at the finish. You battling for the win, but you also had to worry about the 99 on the last lap. Yeah, Carl, I knew he was going to come in hot on the outside.
outside and um, I guess got in there too hot and didn't, couldn't make it stick. But I just can't tell you how proud I am of this race team. Um, these guys just continue to work their butts off through adversity. Uh, we're making the best of a bad situation and, and we almost won another race today. So I'm very proud of these guys. Great pit stops, great race car. Um, you know, we're doing everything that we need to do. So and What a way to start out the season, one, two. It, yeah, it is an amazing way to start the season. Uh, hopefully we can finish up this way. That's what we need to do at the slowest car. We've been so close so many times. Uh, won the Daytona 500. Maybe we can win the uh, championship this year. Finishes second here in Fontana. Now let's go to Steve. Thanks, Matt, with Carl Edwards, who has now finished sixth, fifth, fourth, and third in four <laughs> consecutive runs here at California. But, Carl, how important, we talked about this before the race, how important was it for you to bounce back after Daytona? Uh, it, it's paramount. I mean, this is uh, this is exactly what we needed. Had a good, fun, safe day of racing, didn't wreck anything. And hopefully that helps us out in points a little bit. We didn't lead a lap, but we got to congratulate Greg Biffle, first of all. I mean, he had a dominant car, and Matt Kenseth for winning. But uh, just a fun day, man. I um, had a blast. I mean, it's a fun race. Your crew chief, Bob Osborne, told me this morning that uh, he's a big proponent of getting the season started off well to stay up in the points. It didn't happen in the Daytona 500, but you did You did rally. Yeah, we um, had a little bad luck in the 500, but hey, man, every day's a new day. And I'll tell you what, if, if anything, that was a motivator. I mean, to be 43rd in points, wake up on Monday and uh, realize, hey, we got to do this. That's a motivator. I think our team is, uh, is has enough depth and we're capable of, of coming back. We just have to do it. Nicely done. Let's go upstairs. Said he yesterday in practice, we saw that 654 graphic said he has to finish third on Sunday. <laughs> and he did he a little did. bit better than that, yeah. Matt Kenseth yep. back on track with his winning ways despite Greg Biffle's misfortune. He holds off all comers in a two lap shootout to win at California Speedway. All right. Day Scanner. Get it and other exclusive content online through AOL.com slash sports and NASCAR.com. You guys are awesome! Fox welcomes you back to California. Jeff Pavlik, Chris Myers, and the Sprint's post-race show. 33-year-old Matt Kenseth from Wisconsin in a Jack Roush Ford closing out the weekend. Mark Martin, the winner of the Truck Series. Craig Biffle yesterday, who led the most laps today, winning in the Bush Series. And Matt Kenseth coming in. As he said, he thought Biffle had the best car, but in the end, Kenseth, after the Daytona 500 disappointment, when he thought he had a car that could win, got tangled up with uh, Tony Stewart, comes back with a big win today. A former Jack Roush driver, Jeff Burton, with Richard Childress Racing, an impressive fifth-place finish. Our Matt Yoakum is standing by with him. Matt? Came on strong near the end, but Jeff, did you hit one of those segments during the race where you guys started chasing it a little bit? Yeah, the singular Chevrolet really went fast uh, the first run. I mean, we went up and drove up to second, I think, and had a fast car on the track. Stop, put on tires, and uh, then I got too tight, and uh, just just wasn't any good. And finally got it where it was sideways loose. And when it was sideways, I could make ground. And on long runs, we were really good. And um, you know, good solid day for us. I, I I really like it when you get tight, and then you can make an adjustment and make the car too loose. That means you you know you're you're bobbing back and forth, but you can eventually hit the middle. And and um, we were our best when it counted, and and that's uh, that that's a good thing. Good weekend for Jeff Burton, both in the NASCAR Bush Series and Cup today, fifth here in Fontana. Dick? With Jeff Gordon. And uh, what is the old saying that a racer goes to the racetrack with? Never give up? That's right. And, and we did. And I'm real proud of this race team and, uh, you know, just, just the effort they're bringing to the racetrack right now. Unfortunately, we're having to fight a little bit harder than we need to, for, you know, especially for a 13th place finish. But uh, I, I thought that the two-tire call, two tire call was the right call. Unfortunately, too many cautions came out. I think we would have been, you know, uh, fifth or sixth place car. So we would have made up spots. But uh, all those cautions and then that one at the end, really, guys, we probably should have come in then. Well, still a decent day. Let's go to Steve. Thank you, Dick, and uh, with Casey Kane, who finished fourth. And Casey, Darrell Waltrip had an interesting observation late in the race. He said he felt good for you because he thought this would actually help your confidence. Is that true? Uh, I felt I felt like we had a good run. You know, everybody on our Dodge Steelers, UAW Dodge Charger race team did a great job. We had good pit stops. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think we could have done a little better there. I spun the tires. I just screwed up. And, 
and uh, spun the tires twice in a row on that restart and, and lost it from there. So that was my fault. Uh, lost a few spots, but it's a good run. Stanley, McDonald, Siemens, uh, a lot of good sponsors. We haven't talked to you guys after a race in a long time, so it's good to do that. How encouraging is it for you, Casey, to put a number like that on the board? It's good. Run 11th last week at Daytona. Uh, had a top 10 car there and, and got a top five this week. So real happy. It should uh, be a good points day. And, and that's what we got to think about. You know, these races are tough, very, very good competition. And we got to I got to think more about points instead of uh, some of the stuff I thought about last year. So if we can keep doing that, we'll uh, hopefully stay up here and, and uh, get to talk to you guys more often after the race. Uh, our pleasure. Thanks, Casey Kane. Nicely done. We'll go to Chris Myers. Thank you, Steve. Casey's first top five finish since last August. Casey weren't with us. Throughout the afternoon, Greg Biffle, part of Roush Racing, with Kurt Busch starting on the pole, takes the lead and led the most laps. Tony Stewart led 28 laps today. Yeah, he also had a strong race car. You see him going by Greg Biffle right there. And it looked like the battle was going to shape up between these two cars as we got toward the end. Tony had a really up and down day, had a flat left front tire, had to go to the back of the pack, but he battled his way back all the way right to the end, then he lost an engine. All right, got up to fourth, and then uh, the blown engine uh, took him out of the race. First DNF since last April in August. And then here's where Matt Kenseth suddenly appears. He started or qualified 31st, so he's come from the furthest back to win this race. Meanwhile, Greg Biffle, his Roush teammate, we heard him over the radio. If you were with us through the Fox broadcast talking, you can see that Biffle has some engine problems. Kurt Busch spins out, former Roush driver, bringing out a caution. And then on the restart, Biffle just didn't have it, was out of the picture. Yeah, the engine finally let go. And you can see right there, Doug Richard, yeah, that's pretty much ends their day. He says it's over, boys. And uh, they headed for the garage. And then uh, Kenseth has to hang on and fight off Jimmy Johnson, the Daytona 500 winner who wound up second. But Matt Kenseth, 2005 Cup champion, 2000 Cup Rookie of the Year in victory lane here in California. Let's get some final thoughts from Daryl Larry and Mike. Well, Jimmy Johnson, a one-two punch to start the season. He's the leader. Casey Mears, two top tens, second in points. But Darrell, four, Tony Stewart, and Greg Biffle. What a tough day to rebound from. It really is, and you got to remember, there's an urgency about these early races. It's not a 36 season, a 36 race season. It's a 26 race season. These early races will really, really set you up for getting in the chase when you get to the 26 race at Richmond. So you can't fall out of any of these early races. So much to overcome and not much time to do it. But Larry, the Roush cars on the downforce tracks. Well, wow. They've just picked up where they left off last year, and I think they've got a little better race car with that Ford Fusion. Plus, I think the Roush H horsepower is a little better and it's going to show up at two-thirds of the racetrack which is like this track we raced on today all right we're off to mexico city with the bush cars next sunday and we'll see you in vegas in two weeks chris all right thanks guys look forward to that stick around except on the west coast the simpsons war at home very funny family guy and american dad 9 30 eastern 8 30 central a lot of laughs a lot of entertainment today as we watch from the hollywood hotel trackside here at the california speedway and matt kenseth looks like and i know it's a couple of races with tony stewart in the hunt as well but along with jimmy johnson guys to watch in the chase for the championship well right now i think he's established himself he and robbie riser they want to go back and have a chance to recapture the cup obviously but how about the 42 and the 48 jimmy johnson wants his first championship he wins it Daytona finished seconds today. But Casey Mears, who's third in points, good run for him today. I mean, second in points, he had an excellent run also. So he backed up what he did down at Daytona. So we got a lot of stuff starting to shake up early on. Oh, by the way, the guy in fifth place in points. How about Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Yeah, and he doesn't really run well. I want to go no. back to Jeff Gordon. We heard his comments. And uh, what was your line uh, when he <laughs> went into the pits and made the tire <laughs> decision? Two tire misfire, my friend. <laughs> and he even said it himself. I couldn't believe he didn't come down and get tires on that last caution. I mean, that's the thing right now. He needed to come back and give himself a chance, and I don't think they did that. And we saw 500 miles racing in Southern California. Normally in traffic, that'll take you three days. It took three and a half hours for these guys. Next weekend, the Bush Series qualifying on speed. And on Sunday, as the Cup drivers get a weekend off, in Mexico, the Bush Series 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific, you'll see it on Fox. The Oscars next Sunday, not too far from here, of course, Hollywood. Now, nobody started Crash, the movie that's up for a nomination, but the 20 car and the 16 car, they could be nominated for Brokeback Engine because the combination of those two, Biffle and Stewart, led for a total of 196 laps and both failed to finish the race.
Matt Kenseth came through in a couple of weeks in Las Vegas where Jimmy Johnson won the last time. Remember the post-race inspection? There was an issue there. For all the gang here, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox.